Uh. Yeah, is, uh, there we go. The freestyle <laughs> by Corey Holcomb and this bitch. Because <laughs> I don't like your daughter, bitch. <laughs> I don't like your daughter, bitch. Ever since I saw the little hoe, niggas knocking on my motherfucking door. <laughs> is Trina there? Is she coming out? I say, hey, put that thing in that bitch mouth. Cause I don't like your daughter, bitch. <laughs> Going in my refrigerator. Every nigga that nut in her. Somehow they hate her. Oh. Her two kids that she kept because she thought them dudes was going to give a fuck. <laughs> but then they ducked out on her ass. <laughs> fuck that silly slut. Even though that bitch do got a big ass butt. But I won't fuck her though. Because it's your daughter. So get the daughter out of my face before the slaughter. I don't like your daughter, bitch. I told you he has some shit. America. Star power has hit the 5150 show. We live again another week about to talk this shit. You know how I go. I got OG Darlene Ortiz right here. I got my man Zoe Williams in the house. I know they're going to get you because that outfit, they, they be riding my outfits. We got somebody more colorful than me today. My man Dre in the motherfucking house. What's up, Dre? What's up? And my man who made it to the show, I don't know how pretty I am for this show. Willie motherfucking D, what's up, boy? You good? Yeah, I'm good, baby. Willie on chill mode. I'm I saw good. you know how you, when, when you pull up and you still be on the phone about five more minutes. We already know what that was about. Oh, <laughs> fuck I'm stand out. Look, I'm out here I'm later. No, I'm just fucking with you. I don't know what happened. I'm just talking shit. Anyway. 5150 in the house. You know how this go. We're going to jump right into the subject today because I want to. I, I noticed my man, Big Poppy, brother from the um, Boston Red Sox, uh, Dominican brother. Well, yeah. Went home to kick it. Kick it with the people he grew up around. Well, he's retired now, too, so yeah. Hey, he's retired. And um, it just made me get to thinking can you have money? And still hang in the hood, even if it's the hood you grew up with. Can you have money and kick it with your peoples? I mean, this is a real problem in America and obviously in the Dominican, too. Everywhere where people don't have, just because you grew up around them people, this is my opinion. Mm. If you have, I don't think you're in the safe zone kicking it with the ones that don't have. Just because this is an envious ass in my opinion, this is an envious ass world, but in America, um, it's um, it's wild card shit going on in the hood. It's it's no, it's no rules. It's mm. it's mm. every man for himself, and you know what I'm saying. If you are doing all right financially, kicking it around people who are not doing all right financially, this has become dangerous. Mm. I believe that's what happened to my man, Big Poppy, um, out here in L.A. Um, the brother Nipsey. These are all people that know you and are around you, that get you. So I'm saying, I want to start out talking about this. Being, is there a safe zone if you got money, if you hanging in the hood with your niggas? You yeah, get what yeah. I'm saying? No. You know what I'm saying? So you want to say something about this? Damn. I, 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 shit, if you pay. No, not even then. If you pay, not even then. D got first hand knowledge on this. What happened when the motherfuckers y'all was paying? D, not even then. Oh, with us? <laughs> I'm saying like you know when you was around the, the brother well, Ice T. A couple of times we had some uh, situations, and they were actual people that you considered friends. Mm -hmm. So those were the ones when they know your whereabouts, how you roll. Usually those are the first ones to have access to be able to do something like that and then you got people that are friends of a friend doesn't mean they're mine but you trust your your buddy and you bring in some people hmm. around and then that's the second in new motherfuckers right they're just saying who's this guy it's usually that that's the second one and then other than that if you out in public i mean there's just no telling you putting yourself out there so y'all remember the article that tupac did and he's like i want to be in my community but i can't be in my community because mm -hmm. my people are hungry and they'll kill me hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So he knew it way back then. Yeah. I think it's just too much of a temptation for the people around you. Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to really put myself, but most likely 
other people in that situation where they have to be tempted around me thinking about how I'm living mm -hmm. and I'm only here for a short while but I get to go back to my mansion and living good the way I'm living mm -hmm. and everybody got to stay where they at in, in, in that struggle right it's just I wouldn't want to even put people in that type of stress you know mm -hmm. myself personally right. you right. know I well, think we got to be real careful about you know talking about how how we interact with our people in the hood right because you know we got we're in my opinion, we're the only group of people who have a propensity to leave and not look back. And a lot of these other people, man, of these other groups, the reason why they are as progressive as they are is because they go back. Mm -hmm. They give back. I don't care how, how destructive or how poverty-written the, uh, the community is. They give back. They set up programs. They have um, initiatives in place to help those who want to help themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't help everybody, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of, uh, of our bloodline that are in the hood. And some, some are trapped, but many of them are there because that's where they want to be. That's where they're more comfortable. Right. I know my mom. I bought her a house when I first started making money. I bought her a house before I bought myself a house. And she was at that house for two weeks. One night I spent the night. And she came to me and she said, take me back to the hood. I can't live the fancy life. She mm. said, I appreciate everything you did for me, mm. but I can't do it. And it hit me. That was a valuable lesson for me. Like my mom liked the idea of being in the hood. She liked the excitement. Close to her people. She, <laughs> she liked the excitement. Friends. That's where her friends were. She liked to be able to go right down the street mm -hmm. and... And, and you know hear music at the cafe or whatever but again she liked the excitement was well, a fight oh looking out the window uh -huh. <laughs> she want to see what's going on uh -huh. or whatever now she didn't cause any any of that i mean she did her ass whoopings inside the house uh -huh. you right. know, but but <laughs> but as far as as far as like the excitement of the hood that that you know that's what she wanted to be that's what she was most comfortable at and but she's one of those people that worked every day she didn't break the law you know, she was a productive, law-abiding citizen. Mm -hmm. So there's many people in the hood that, that are right. like that. Mm -hmm. Most people in the hood is like that. Mm -hmm. That I was a little different. Me and my my cast of characters, we were a little different. Like cause we when, you was on top, when you was on top, <laughs> let, or yeah. whatever that or whatever that means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever leave? Yeah, I got the hell out fast. Mm -hmm. See, here's the deal. See, in in in, in my opinion, in my opinion. I don't believe that people should go to, like come to the hood and kick their feet up. Like most people who live in the ghettos, no matter what ghetto they live in, they live there by force, not choice, meaning that they afford what they can afford. And sometimes all they can afford is something in the hood. Right. But the second, the moment they can do a little better, they're going to move their mm. family out of that environment because they understand that many people in the law enforcement community prey on the hood. Mm -hmm. They prey on, on poor people. The uh, city council people, uh, people in uh, the mis different municipalities, they also, the politicians, they prey on the hood also. They only come around to the black folks when they run their campaigns and they lack votes. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's when they come. And, and when they get what they want, they gone. They don't try to fix the potholes, they don't care nothing about the abandoned buildings, the homes. They don't care nothing about teen pregnancy, the high dropout rate. The gangs, you know, all that. You know, the gangs, they don't care nothing about none right. of that. They're like, put, they're over there, send the police in, y'all wrap that, y'all put a belt around their community, and if they stick their head out, bust them in the head. Of you course, know? and I agree with that 100%. Yeah. But what I, I, one thing I definitely want to emphasize is what we do. Mm -hmm. And how we got there, mentality-wise, to do what we do to each other. Right. Now, I'm saying, it's like, I, I, I come from the projects of Chicago. I understand that most people in poverty situations are actually good people. Mm -hmm. The bad guys, you know them. Soon as they show up, right. where you live, oh, them right. the bad guys over there. You right. get what I'm saying? Right. You know who they are. Right. But I'm telling you, man, I swear I'm not making this up. Where where I grew up, Robert Taylor Homes, there was still a pecking order when it comes to what you can do 
and what you can't do. Right. You can't, you right. can't now. send the block up just because you mad at somebody. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, right. Or whatever, whatever. Now, I don't live in Los Angeles as a person who hangs in the hood. I, I ain't gonna lie. I live where it's safe, where I can park my car. Where, where, and I'm just worried about the ghosts of somebody that they dog out. Where it's relatively <laughs> safe. Because right, there's nowhere well, safe. Relatively safe. Right. But what yeah. I'm saying is, Dre, you, you, you spent time in L.A. So yeah. let me ask you something. Out here, is there a pecking order? Can anybody just do what they want to do? Is it all wild court? Or is there a... Uh, a, a sort of like uh, oh you got to talk to so and so if you're going to do Command. something like that you get what I'm saying is it like that out here in LA I don't know well it used to be it used to back be but, yeah. Yeah, back in the day it used to be but things are just you know just buck wild now everybody's doing what they want to do and and I guess the influx of so many more gangs it wasn't as many gangs at one time mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying but that influx of so many more gangs that are not submitted submitted up to underneath some of the OG gangs that were here it's just everything is buck wild it's chaos right and they, it's used, chaos. To, and they used to respect the OGs and the elders and I find but, but, that that's kind yeah. of but what happened no, but what did the respect why did the respect leave though I, I have an opinion right. on that go ahead okay. mm -hmm. um, there's no more men at home we live alone now yeah. We we go visit our kids. We don't. For and this, I'm not saying it's their fault. It's not men's fault, but the circumstance. Well, some of it is. Is right now, daddy come visit the kid. Yeah. I don't know many daddies who live with his kids. Mm -hmm. I just don't know a lot of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that's the reason it's chaos, like it is now, because there is no motherfucker at home. Like God damn it. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just a motherfucker at home. What you want to eat? Yeah, but a lot of, but a lot of those younger guys in the hood would look up to the older OGs as father figures. Mm -hmm. So where did the respect? Well, here, here's what happened. A lot of them went to you know, jail. the respect. Not well. Oh, that OGs. where it started with that. You know, locking just locking up all, everybody they could mm -hmm. find. Just mm -hmm. locking up the man. Mm -hmm. You know, getting them out of the home any kind of way you can. Just lock us up. You know, get the man out of the house. Then you can rape and pillage and do whatever you want mm -hmm. to do to the home. Once you get the man out of the house, yeah. the house, I don't care how strong of, of a woman is inside of that house, you know, it, it, the house is not going to be fortified the same way if it's a man inside of that house with her. Right. Mm -hmm. So once they got rid of the man, then uh, then we took on this this whole idea of, you know, money over everything. Mm -hmm. And one and that and that that more than anything is it, uh, contributed to the destruction. When, money when you, over when, everything. When you say money over everything, yeah. when you say money over everything, and you say money over bitches, and you say get money over everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that means that anything goes. Mm -hmm. that, money over everything means my integrity, my spirituality, everything. all that, you know, my family, yeah. all that, you know, <laughs> all my friendship, e friendship, everything. Money yeah. over everything, yeah. and so now you got a lot of youngsters mm -hmm. who got money, and the OGs are taking orders. From youngsters who don't know shit, mm -hmm. don't know half the shit that they know, but a lot of times OG got to bite his tongue mm -hmm. because he on the payroll mm -hmm. and the youngster paying him. Mm -hmm. See, when I was growing up, it didn't matter that you had money. If you wasn't helping out, if you wasn't uh, helping to feed other people, if you wasn't, and, and, and besides that, even bigger than that, mm -hmm. if you couldn't defend your money, mm -hmm. they would take your money. You can't be in Fifth Ward with a bunch of money and be a sucker. Mm. They gonna take that shit from you. Mm -hmm. So now you can be in Fifth Ward and be you know, a, a, a pup, the kind of dude that won't jump off the porch, mm -hmm. but you had to be co-signed by the OGs. You had to be co-signed by the community. You had to be doing something for the community. A lot of these cats, they, they got the bread and they ain't doing shit for nobody. Not even the dudes that's next to them. A lot of these dudes that got a bunch of money, in, a lot that got a bunch of money, whether they rappers or whether they CEOs or, or, or just in the streets, whatever, however they're getting their money. They're not taking care of the dudes around them. And a lot of these cats are, are still committing crimes. They live in a criminal lifestyle mm -hmm. because they... They rolling with a millionaire. They rolling with multi-millionaires and they can't eat. They starve and they can't feed their families. Mm -hmm. And they out here catching cases and shit. Mm -hmm. they, they showing up at the war shows. They're going to uh, these big high profile parties. They all at the after parties and shit. The games and all this shit. 
But then, you know, when the high when, side, but at the yeah, end of the night, after, when all that night, bullshit all over, that shit is over. He got to go creep in the house, and he laying up in the bed, you know, you know, with some woman that's paying all the bills and shit, and she looking at him like, damn, you steady going out here with all them niggas, and they getting that money, and you right. broke, yeah. you know. That's, that's what that's, happened in my that's opinion. That's one of the biggest problems. Big poppy. Like, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. So. Yeah. Let's say you 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 know some some somebody who's known for having money, whether he be an entertainer or whatever, and you live in the hood. Would you be out in the hood with somebody that you know who got money? Uh, I ain't saying sitting on the porch. I'm saying walking up and down the block. Do you feel like that's safe? I'm uh, saying I'm saying in the average hood in America. Or did you grow up? Let me ask you a question. Did you grow up? I grew in, up in Alton Park. Okay, where is that? Chattanooga. In Chattanooga. And that's a big project out there. They tore it down uh, maybe a decade ago. But I it was a you. terrible project. And we escaped there and came to Southern California in 79. Mm. And then when we got to Altadena, well, you got Altadena Block Cribs. They got their own right down the street, there, yeah. PDL, Pasadena, Denver Lane. So, so have you seen the danger zone? Oh, absolutely. The so, danger zone nowadays, like I said, Willie D said something I agree with. Back in the day, you actually can get co-signed for by somebody, and motherfuckers be like, "Oh, he was so and so." Back in the day, but that's what I'm saying. Back you heard I say back in the day. Absolutely, back now, in the day. Now, now I, I, it's different. You can't co-sign for nobody. Yeah, it's let different. me say this though: that there are uh, some gangs still in uh, in Los Angeles that have straight orders still. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there are some. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. So I just don't want to throw it all under the bus. But there are some gangs that have hierarchies. That you can't just do what you want to do. There mm -hmm. are some. Right. Well, that's good right. to know. Mm -hmm. But I, th I think it goes back to what Willie D said. It's, it's poverty. Poverty creates the thirst. Well, that, that creates but, the hunger. But, but you know, in this country, it does. I was yeah. going to say in this country because I'm going to tell you something. That, that, I lived overseas in Azerbaijan for ten years. Where is that, Willie D? That's on the uh, you, that's in Eurasia. That's like on the Caspian Sea, mm -hmm. and it's like it's it's like uh, I still don't know what that shit is. Well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's 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 northwest Eurasia. by the water, it's northwest somewhere. of Russia. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, northwest of Russia. What is that? Turkey. I mean, uh, I mean it's southwest further. of Russia and northwest north. East of uh, Iran, Iran, I believe. Yeah. I got my geographic right, but anyway, it's between Russia and Iran. How'd but you find your way over there, man? My my kid's mom is a mechanical engineer, mm -hmm. and so it started off with the oil thing. But I do real estate, so I did real estate while I was out there. Got it. But man. The, the thing is, is that like I lived out there for ten years, and I saw. You know how we see a lot of times we see Mexicans at gas stations and stuff waiting on somebody to come through with a truck or car and give them some employment. Mm -hmm. Well, in that in the city I lived in was called it's called Baku, and it's the uh, the uh, capital of uh, Azerbaijan. So Baku, um, in this in this city, the the streets in the mornings are lined. I mean, by the thousands. Mm. Of with guys just looking for work, on, looking wow. for work, and they're on, they're on both sides of the streets in patches, you know, like so. You might see, you know, fifty guys here, and then then a hundred guys here, and then a hundred over there, and mm -hmm. fifty more down. You drive by the mile, and it's fifty more, a hundred there. Mm -hmm. like, Look like a Home Depot it's, everywhere. It's, it's, they're everywhere, and and every last <laughs> one of them. Check this out. Every single one of them has a suit on. Now mm. the suit ain't in the best condition, but they have a suit on, and they got. This right here indicates pride. Mm -hmm. You know, they they wear a suit, yeah. and every single like like every single uh, a person in that in that in that community in that in that city that I lived in, uh, they were community oriented. I remember one time a dude beat up his girlfriend. The whole neighborhood was on his ass. Mm -hmm. They were outside. Beating the dude, I saw an old lady hitting him in slow motion with the, with the broomstick. <laughs> yeah, little kid throwing rocks at him, men up there kicking him, men, right, kicking him, like stomping him. Mm -hmm. They beat his ass to a pulp. Right, you don't see men beating up women in this city. Mm -hmm. Now, domestic abuse does happen. Right, in fact, they average about a murder a month. Mm. And most of their murders are domestic abuse, or sometimes it's some type of dude tried to come up on with a robbery or something. Mm -hmm. right. But they average four murders a month. 
by comparison, Houston has 4 million people. Baku has 4 million people. We average about 15 murders a week. Mm. See, and a lot of this is people trying to come up and then also people that have real poor skills in conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. Like, we are a very angry society and we snap like this. You know, in fact, one of the things that need to happen in the schools in America is that they need to implement some conflict resolution courses because people don't know how to resolve their, their, their conflict without fists, guns, and insults. Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. Yeah. That, in fact, that's why that's a lot of times when I have um, guests like you and, and Dre and, 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 you know, I, I fuck with Zoe and, and D, I, I try to set it up like throw the alley-oop for conflict resolution because, believe it or not, there are people who actually don't even know what to do. Yeah. In situations where you would think they would know what to do. You get right. what I'm saying? Right, right. So conflict resolution, that that's something I can't believe that's not like a main agenda yeah. on, 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 on CNN or something right. like yeah. that. How Mandatory, do we teach people like, yeah. what to do in yeah. certain situations? Because there are a lot of people who really don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, Shit, I, I could instruct the class. With that. You, you, CNN, you say, right? <laughs> well society at large is not worried about how we deal with those issues that's something that we have to take up and begin to educate our own people about mm -hmm. you know society ain't worried about what's going on in our communities and stuff mm -hmm. but, but, that, but conflict resolution is, is a broader scope everybody goes at, like look it's at a all, human issue it's yeah. a human issue i mean look at all like let me tell you something like man white people they go they do they do the same things that we do you know they kill they don't kill on the block they kill inside the house. They study, they poison and right. stuff like that. Hire hit men and stuff like that. Or they go out and add a whole school or if somebody in the workplace. They're killing like multiple. You know, it happens every day. It happens every day. They 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 barbecue. Uh, we barbecue in the front yard. They barbecue in the backyard. Mm -hmm. You know, they they, right. they they sell dope. You know, they, we 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 got people that go out. We got the trap house. You know, uh, somebody's you know selling out on the block. They got. One dude coming to their house two times a week, reloading, pulling up in the garage, pulling out, bam. You know what I'm saying? It's quiet. They're in the community, they're in the subs. You know what I'm saying? We are in the traps. If they do the same thing, it ain't what you do, it's how you do it. So a, a lot of what they do is, 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 is like... It's glossed over, you know, because of the way that they do it. Right. The dominant you know? society is the reason yeah. was the gloss over. They're a dominant society. What you, what yeah, you so they can, they can, yeah, so they can, yeah, so they can paint the narrative however they exactly. want to. So right. When society. you say dominant society, you have to explain that, Dre. Well, they're in control of everything. They're in control of all the money, the banks, everything. You know, talking about Caucasian people. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, they're in control the of the narrative, the, the narrative, social the narrative, the judicial system, everything. Yeah. So they're not the dominant society. We are not. You know what I'm saying? I think we need to start really realizing that. And I think, let me just say this. Um, uh, one of, one of the, 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 the major issues we're having right now, uh, let me just say, plug, uh, that I'm doing uh, conversations with the streets and Corey will be there um, on, uh, on, on the tw June 26th. That's the good. first one we had, Umar Johnson, uh, uh, Judge Joe Brown, mm -hmm. and Riza Islam. Nice. And that was on the 29th of May. It was awesome. Was this awesome. next one we have is going to be my son, uh, Corey, Big U, and Jamila T. Davis about a New York. Nice. And what, what the reason why I wanted to have these conversations with the streets and then take it across the country is because what the system has been so successful uh, with us is dividing us through our ideologies. Well, he's a Muslim, uh, he's a Pan-Africanism and, and all this, right? So I, I talk to all these brothers and say, brother, let's not focus on our ideologies. Let's focus on black youth and unity amongst our people. And each of them that I talk to agreed to that, which is why we're bringing that together. Uh, we need to show what it looks like because you said some, a lot of people don't know what it looks like because they've never experienced what unity is. We as leaders in our communities all over this country have to first come together and unify from different parts of the, of the country yes. and show what it looks like, right? I so, agree. Yeah, so, so that's what we're trying to do now. And uh, unless we build upon our unity, then we're going to be at the bottom of the totem pole. You know what I'm saying? We'll never be able to build, create power. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we lack unity. That's probably the, the, one of the most fundamental things we're missing as a people that we need to address is black unity. So um, 
you know, hopefully I could talk to Willie D about being involved in some of them. We're going to do them every single I, month. I, I love it. Everybody you just, yeah. you just, yeah. you just named, I respect. So Yeah, yeah. Oh, so so mm -hmm. we don't need to talk yeah. about the issue no more because one thing that black people, we get, we, we get caught up in is being able to, we're the best at describing what the problem is. Can't nobody <laughs> describe no problem like black people. Uh, we're yeah. the best at it. Yeah. It's just that our, yeah. our actions <laughs> about the issue. It's not equivalent to us describing the problem. Yeah. We got some of the most beautiful, proficient orators about what the problem is. <laughs> yeah. But ain't nobody putting no work in. Right. You well, it's a, it's, a, it's a great time because, I mean, like, what you put together, I respect a lot. It's like people are going to catch on to it, and it's going to, I know it's going to fly. It's going to fly. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and this, this, this is another thing I want to bring up. The other day I was... I was watching television, like, because, you know, the basketball game came on yesterday. Mm -hmm. right. And I was watching ESPN, and they had the, uh, the old soccer team, uh, those women put together uh, Mia Hamm and her crew. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if everybody know what I'm talking right. about, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah. it's a whole bunch of girls who was on TV talking about um, things like what women don't get. I want, I want somebody to answer this, be bold enough to... To, to speak from the heart on this because I will but I'm just saying <laughs> does that throw off everything when we get to talking about um, how X-Men is called X-Men why is it called <laughs> X-Men and Women and all this shit I think this is a distraction <laughs> that is getting too much energy I'm like what the fuck are you talking about it's X-Men it's some women in there too right. that's what they should say but it's mainly X-Men that'll beat your ass mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though the most powerful X girl is a, is a, a X Men, a, a most powerful mutant is a woman, right? Yeah. Uh, which they would Phoenix. have it like that. But I'm just saying, I, I feel like I read into <laughs> stuff like that. And is it just me? Is it just me? No, I mean, no, I, I, I see it too, man. Like we 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 got a major problem in this country with separatism, man. You know, like we 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 are divided a, a, along every line that you can possibly think of. You know, racial, economic. You know. Um, We've divided along uh, geographical lines, you know. Um, um, ageism, you know, everything, yeah. Yeah, ageism. Everything that you can think of, gender, everything you can think of, it's like divide, 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 divide. Oh, we're, we're one. We're together. But it's, it's too much division. And we can be divided <laughs> along some uh, certain lines. But one line that will never work, you know, some, some of this other stuff we, we might be able to, be able to coexist and, and, and get through it or whatever and you know damaged or whatever but one line that 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 they are working on right now to divide us on that we we will not be able to recover from is the gender line mm -hmm. like there's no absolutely no way possible that men and women can be at war you know like I remember growing up and they used to say men are for Mars women are for Venus and it was cute at the time. You was mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, because we got differences. And so right. it's cool to, you know, like to have little meetings and stuff. And we like, you know, have a little friendly exchange and work stuff about our right. differences. And we work it out. Right. We agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. Well, now we, 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 we disagree to disagree now. Mm -hmm. That's how we are now. That's how we're shaped. And that's how we, that's, that's the narrative. And we can't recover from that. Right. Like, so when you have, when you say like, as a man, I, I see a lot of men in, into their feelings and their emotional and I'm not an emotional dude I have emotions but I'm not emotional because I think that's weak you did it's, you now, think it's weak to be emotional I think, I think it's weak to be emotional to be to, oh, to be, be emotional to, to be, be emotional I think like I say I have emotions it's, it's you everybody has emotions mm -hmm. but some dudes are emotional mm -hmm. and everything that they do are based on their emotions you dig what I'm saying? Mm. That's a problem. And but they are promoting it like that's cool because that's they don't want it to be a line. It's like we can make these dudes weak. The weaker we can make them, the more we can control them. Mm. So we can't survive with men and women being at war. How can I say that I love uh I, that I love my daughter, but I hate women? And double standard. Or right. you know, yeah. how can I how can you be a woman and say that you hate men? But you love your son. Right. You did, it don't make sense. You're not qualified to raise a, a, a boy, to try to make a, a, make a boy become a man if you hate men. If you are a, if you, if you are a woman, if you are a man, and if you and you hate women, 
you are not qualified to raise a daughter. You might say you love your daughter, but right. you can't even give your daughter the tools to love, to be appreciated, and, and, and to know what to look for in a man. Because your ass is damaged. You're, you're not qualified. That's a war we can't win. And it's like people don't even understand that. It's like all of these people with degrees and all of this so-called expertise and all this shit that they do, and they have no clue. Mm -hmm. It's The shit is fundamental. It's rudimentary. What do you think about that, Zoe? I mean, I agree with some of it. Uh, this is what's good like we it, don't agree with yeah, everything, it sounds but I want to like, hear it. It sounds <laughs> like uh, what he's outlining to me, what Willie is outlining to me, is, is a mental health issue. That's what I'm hearing. You know, uh, a lot of the dysfunction in our relationships come from the dysfunction in our homes, right? And if you was raised by a single mother who didn't have time to nurture you because she had to be out there and pay those bills. We got, I had a mama like that. It wasn't a bunch of hugs. It wasn't a bunch of, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It was, okay, you, your sandwich is in there. You, you know, I, I got to go. You but know, she knew you had a sandwich. Yeah. But you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so a lot of people are coming from dysfunction. And then they carry that dysfunction into their adulthood. Mm -hmm. And then those relationships that present themselves to them as adults are there so they can work the shit out. Right. People think, I think we have a fantasy-based model for relationships that's, uh, you know, orchestrated by motherfucking Disney. You know, uh, he going to sweep me off my feet and right, he going to... Listen, really, right. we, we have to understand the, con the purpose of the construct of relationship in America is business. Right? It's legacy. It's generational wealth. Well, you've been redlined out of every situation that creates wealth in America. And when you do create wealth, that's seen as a terrorist act. All you got to do is go back to Tulsa, <laughs> Oklahoma. These, these niggas then came in this town and bought up 600 businesses and created 600 businesses? Oh no, this is the first time we're going to drop a motherfucking bomb on an American city. Mm -hmm. we, we're about to, we're about, these are terrorists. Mm -hmm. So well, you, you have to remember, this is what's happening in our relationships. It's not just men saying, oh, I, I disrespect women. No, it's coming, it's modeling a disrespectful household. Coming out of that household and then doing what you modeled. Right? That has to be undone. And it's not necessarily disagreeing with Willie. It's coming from a different perspective. It's how do I undo the modeling of dysfunction I grew up in? Mm -hmm. When Willie talks about conflict resolution, you know, they've gotten rid of the fucking conflict resolution as a term because they understand conflict revolves like debt. You don't get rid of debt, you manage debt. So now it's conflict management. It's no longer conflict resolution. There's not going to be a time where you get out of a situation and not come into another one. So there's, you know, you might be able to deal with this here, but then you go to the next relationship, there's another set of issues you're going to have to deal with. It's conflict management. I think mm. that in this country, the main problem that we're having as people, black, white, whatever, is... There's too many people scared to admit their flaws. I feel like, for their example, flaws or their fears, their flaws, all of it, flaws, right. fears, whatever. Yeah. yeah, I feel like what I was watching on TV the other day was a whole bunch of women sitting around scared to talk about the day in their forties, and they look like they in they they look like they in their eighties. <laughs> I'm talking about all them, all them women. You like, man. Me and Ham was just running up and down the soccer field the other day. Now look at her. I feel like you are dodging the elephant in the room. You are upset because of how you look. Now I'm acting silly a little bit, but I really believe this. I think that in this country, the main problem with people is we don't want to admit that we don't like ourselves. And no if you are around is. people who have the confidence to talk about their own flaws, mm -hmm. then you're around people that you probably can grow and build around. But if you're around people who fronting like everything is all good, because we know everything ain't all good, you can't grow around people like that. Most of us are broke, and we're going to fix it by talking about what's broke about us. Let you know go, what I'm saying? Let me go back to this relationship. Let me go back to this relationship thing we were talking about. 
Um, and before I say what I say, let me just say I've been happily married over 21 years. And for me, that is an incredible con uh, accomplishment coming out the game that I was in. Mm -hmm. A lot of people n never equate me from the movie American Pimp, Gorgeous Dre, as Andre Taylor, the activist of what I'm doing right now. Right. Mm -hmm. But there were some things I learned about the game, right, mm -hmm. about manhood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have an idea about if a person's in that lifestyle, they're automatically respectful to woman. But that that's not my reality. Mm -hmm. Right? Wait, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. If a person is in what lifestyle? The pimp lifestyle. Okay. Yeah, Just there, trying to make sure. Because some people might not know. TV and rap music and all that right. has given an idea of what it looks like but the individuals that really participate in the life down the level that I did we know that as long as the media and people think that's what it is it'll keep the cheat up off of us you'll never see us mm -hmm. right. right so let me go back into this relationship right um, I said something in American Pimp that resonated with brothers throughout the country to this day I said before you're a pimp before you're a doctor you got to be a man mm -hmm. right so what we're having right now is a lot of males and a few men man just a few because nobody has really said what a man is right you we automatically think when you become 18 you are a man but that's not so a man is that's so a male is a gender but a man is a position right there are certain things that you have to have to classify you as a as, to classify yourself as a man mm -hmm. it is a position that one holds and if you don't have the qualifications to hold to position you just a male. So what's happened now, all these males have entered into relationships with said women and has affected the women. And now the women have a point of reference to these males and have never really experienced what a man is. Mm -hmm. A man is not deceitful. He is not underhanded. The one thing I learned out the game is that for me to have to lie to somebody to get them or for them to be with me made me less than who I said I was. So I'm going to tell her up front. I'm not monogamous. I might have a few to give her the decision to decide whether she want to deal with me or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And she will respect me because I'm just honest enough to say, listen, this is just what it is. Right. Instead of lying about it mm -hmm. and then her finding out three, four months down the road. And now I'm de she uh, she feels I'm deceitful and then she's mad. I'm a dog. And now you have all women saying that men are dogs because she never was with a man. Right. She was with a male. Right. So yeah, I just want to clarify that. Right. That's agreed. You but but I also think she needs to date the lie she believes in too. Make sure you expand on that because I, I don't believe this that. Is important. I don't believe because that because you taking so you the pressure. They have to go through. No, because because I, I, I think relationship is a mirror. I want him to explain what he means. I think yeah. relationship is a mirror, spiritual mirror. You get what you are. You attract who you are. You attract your level of consciousness. And if you sit down and ask a person who is self abusive. Maybe you haven't dealt with this trauma that came out your home, right? It was Carl Jung who once said, the subconscious is all your hurts buried. And it's trying to work its way to your conscious to resolve itself through conflict in relationship. So sometimes you get the buster because you're a beacon for busters. And they're offering you an opportunity to see yourself as you are. So you can't take the spiritual element out of it either. Relationship is a mirror. And a lot of times we let women off the hook by saying, brother, you got to be something that is a paragon while she gets to be mediocre. No, you are getting your reflection. You are getting a lesson. And if you keep going back to the same kind of dude, which a lot of women do, I sit down and ask women how I'm often do you right. ignore your intuition mm -hmm. and how your intuition is connected to his intention not his behavior see most women if you sit them down and say what speaks louder words or behavior they'll say behavior but what speaks louder than behavior is a man's intention mm -hmm. and most women that intuition will say, yeah, he did everything right. He said everything right. He paid for the meal. He provided. He did it. But something's off. Is and it? then a lot of times women will ignore that. So that means they're a co-creator in the bullshit they said they didn't want in the first place. So you have to keep that spiritual element 
in the relationship. I'm That's deep. I want to give right. everybody a chance to, to say what they got to say. Do you want it to say something? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 don't want, I want everybody <laughs> to. I'm coming no, this from good a stuff. whole different perspective because. Well, let's hear it, brother, because we definitely. Listen, hear coming it. out. Yeah. Let, I don't want to belabor the point, but. No, coming, we good. Coming out the game, you know, I'm so empowered about who I am as a man mm -hmm. that I feel that any woman, whatever her conditions are, whatever her shortcomings are, mm -hmm. that I'm able to empower any woman mm -hmm. that deals with me as a man to raise her up out of whatever. If I'm interested in her enough, right, mm -hmm. I'm not looking at what well, she got this, that, and the other. I'm looking at my ability as a man because I've done it before right, over and over and over again. But, but look, look, Dre, I, I, I got to ask you this about I agree what you with just him. said. <laughs> yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> any woman, that's what I'm saying. Everybody can't be saved. My the, okay, this is my opinion. Well, 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 unpack what I see that. on this planet. Unpack being saved. <laughs> unpack yeah. that. What do you mean by that? Unpack that. Okay, being saved, being taken out of the condition they in. There are some people, men and women, who really they want to be who they are. They don't want you to take them up oh. out of mm. where they are. And, there's that. and yeah. if you got common sense, eventually you realize. This motherfucker don't want to be what I'm talking about. Don't you think that exists? Listen, but I, I agree with the point. I agree Listen. with the point Gorgeous George made. Yeah. Let me let me, Dre, let me Dre, give Dre, Gorgeous yeah. George. Go, uh, Dre. Gorgeous Dre, sorry. Yeah. I, I agree with that point he just made. <laughs> he made two points. The, the last one was if I'm in my truth, I can pull her up out of that. I agree with that. I agree with the point before, too, which is uh male versus man see if we drive up to pasadena right now to the foothills that mountain doesn't need us to define what it is we know what it is off rip mm -hmm. the truth doesn't need a definition and true masculinity doesn't either mm. it is what it is when you see it when you know it when you interact with it it's okay that's what it is a lot of times you find a lot of men trying to expound on what it is to be a man. Oh, you don't have to do that. Right. You just be what you are. Period. And a lot of times, there's a lot of dudes out there that will go accumulate shit. When you say accumulate shit, what you mean? It could be cars, it could be diamonds, okay. it could be jewels. You know what I'm saying? Right. They try That's to you, they try to get the masculine accoutrement. Let me mm -hmm. put this shit on. That nigga said accoutrement. Right? Let me you put know, this you shit know on. What, though, I, that I, ain't I, it. I, I, you know, I, I respectfully disagree. And here's why. Because what do you disagree with? with I, I, as sure. far as like manhood not having to be defined. Okay. Because I'm going to tell you something, bro. If it was defined, we wouldn't have all of these fucking crooked planes landing everywhere. It wouldn't be like it is. Because we didn't define what it is and we didn't uphold the standard mm -hmm. we didn't let it be known this is what it is and this is the standard bro you got to let people know if if nobody every standard must be every standard must be pronounced mm -hmm. if, if if you know coming in this studio you know this this show mm -hmm. 5150 show right is a standard anybody come in here and try to go under that standard it ain't gonna work. Right. If you don't meet the standard, right. you don't meet the standard. Right. It ain't gonna work. If you're in a workplace, mm -hmm. you go in a workplace. You know, uh, there's a standard, and if you don't meet that standard, you're probably not gonna be that long. Right. Even when you were in the game, you had a certain standard for women. Right. If the women could not meet that standard, they they wasn't gonna be on the team long. You see. Right. So manhood manhood has a standard. Right. And we have to define. It's it's up to the men to define it. We thought. I personally thought for that. What well, do they know? What man? What it is to be a man? I mean, I got to define that. I mean, you grow up and you do the right thing. You be responsible. You know, you you stand. You you know, you stand by your word. You mm -hmm. know, uh, you take care of your responsibility. Your children. That's a man. You know, like I ain't everybody ought to know that. Right. They don't know that. Mm. They've got niggas running around here in dresses and shit and wigs and titties and shit and they saying that's a man. <laughs> no, dog. It don't work like that. that. It don't work like that. We got to define what it is because we sat back and we've allowed these wicked ass people out here to control the narrative for right. us and we let them define it. You see what happened when they defined it. Right. Yeah, it's, so, not, a, it's not enough just to define it. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. That's not enough. Right. 
we need to live it in exactly. front of. Exactly. Right. The define is not enough. It has exactly. to be something that must be lived in front of. My father lived manhood in front of me. Right. Yeah. Right? It needs to be lived. So a lot of people have been defining manhood for hundreds of years. Right. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have been defining it in our communities. Right. Mm-hmm. But that ain't been lived in front of nobody. Right. Well, I, I think, when, I think when you, I t- when I, you know, I think when I say it, you know, define it, I think it's, it goes without saying that it's, it's part of the action. But right. again, you know, no, it's you got to say that. Yeah. You got to actually yeah. say it. Because yeah. yeah. there's some slow pokes out there, yeah. for real, yeah. bro. You would, yeah. you would think that. You know, well, that, well, that's understood. You know, like what's understood ain't got to be said, right? And that's why I'm glad that's we all saying this. Exactly. Yeah, because there are people who get lost. Yeah. Right. And they don't want to be lost. But yeah. by y'all saying what you're saying, you helping them follow what's happening. So and, I'm loving and, this. And they're both right. They're both right. Again, the problem with a lot of the definitions is they get concretized. In other words, they get mm-hmm. inflexible. Right. Yes, you're a man, and there's some basic principles about manhood, but those principles have to be scalable. Those principles have to grow as you grow. So in other words, they have to be pliability and flexibility in the standards that you create for yourself as a man. As you grow, you should be able to recontextualize what manhood is as you grow. Because you can build it on one level of consciousness and say, yo, I'm a man right here. But then, as you begin to build yourself up in the world, your mind, your spirit, your understanding, your as diet, you grow, you now you're going to have to recontextualize what a man is. Societally speaking, men used to be a motherfucker who can go down there and build a log cabin. Niggas ain't building log cabins today. Fast forward to the 50s. A man is somebody that can take a motherfucking carburetor apart and put that bitch back together. You you get what I'm saying? These things are changing. So what is a man as it pertains to today? Can somebody answer that? Uh, Bro, uh, I hear what you're trying to say or what you're saying, but... Uh, Dre, you got so you got to speak in that mic. Yes, the standard it don't change, man bro. is don't change, man. It don't change. It ain't fluctuating with nothing. That's why I just Listen, said there's a fundamental father. thing that is manhood. But I'm talking about what men are called to be in this society and what they are defined as. It still don't change. Yeah. So again, yeah. from the beginning of time. So so no response. So response, when right. I was I when it. when 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 my father was living in front of me with manhood. And explaining as he was living that a man is never to be deceitful. He keep his word. Mm-hmm. A man of principles, honor, and integrity. Yes. So when I was facing that life prison sentence in the feds, mm-hmm. and I stood up and uh, and didn't never tell nobody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was willing to do the time. Mm-hmm. That's manhood. Yeah. Right. You took responsibility. That's okay. that's man. Okay. We agree. Uh, no, when okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm go ahead. sorry. What you want to say? No, I, I wanted. To I'm just ask giving you. examples and circumstances because today, the the youngsters today don't understand that idea of what manhood is. This is why we live in a in a time within our communities where it's the greatest high treason that we've ever encountered, mm-hmm. as far as people being having some integrity to their word out there doing what they're doing in the streets and all that, and in relationships, and in relationships, right? right? So all this plays an incredible part. You know what I'm saying? So to me, if I give my word about something, right? Say I'm talking to my wife mm-hmm. or before she was my wife. I'm not going to just tell her I'm a man. I'm going to live some things in front of her. Then I'm going to let her identify that that's what a man is. Because of her mm-hmm. point of references of dealing with males before. And so the reason why, let me just go back into this. The reason why it makes my relationship so much easier because I'm doing the work first. Right, and then once I do the work first, and she can identify. Now this looks different than what I was dealing yeah, with. Yeah. Right now, that puts more pressure on her now, right? Because I don't live this, so now I can apply more pressure for her to be everything she is because I've lived it in front of you first. Yeah. You know I, what I'm saying? I, no, I, I'm not I waiting totally for her to be yeah, a woman. I, I, Some, let me yeah. tell you this, because I used to life coach people, and dude, and I'm, I'm gonna let you guys go with this one, but I'm gonna say. Dudes used to, first thing they say to me is, I want to be a man. And if my girl would have did this, then I would have did that. I said, man, don't ever say Mm-mm. that to me again. Mm-mm. He said, why are you tripping, Dave? <laughs> I said, because what you're really saying is that <laughs> in order for you to be a man, yeah. you need her to be a woman. 
You, know, you got to be a man, period. Come on, where you go take yeah. it? You know what tripped me out That's a lot, I mean. man? I'm glad you said that. What tripped me out a lot is when I hear dudes say, you know, you got to let me be a man. You know? oh, <laughs> oh, right. Hey, let me be a man. No. Right. Your women need to, you need to let your man be a man. See, man, it ain't a woman made a woman that can let me be a At man. All. Right, I'm a right, man right. all on my own. Yes. My yeah, bone yeah. virtue, I am yeah. a man. Right, it's, right. But it trips me out when when dude when I hear dudes saying that. That's hey, funny. Yeah. Let me be a man. Right. <laughs> they, they ask him like she in the way of that. Right. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> That's right. right. No, we agree with all of that. All of that is good. All of that is good. I'm just talking about how society has become transactional, and men have been reduced. So there are a lot of women out there that'll throw out integrity, that'll throw out honesty, just long as you provide and protect. You got I agree one hundred percent. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's a lot. So of I don't disagree with yeah. what you're saying. You're talking about but it's not pillars. Predicated on her. We, I know that. None of that. I don't care what she says. But you're talking about pillars of manhood that I think where this conversation should go is how we transfer that as generational knowledge to kids. You're living in to front young of them. boys. You're living in front of. You, them. We got to mm-hmm. pull. But I'm talking about mass across the nation. You live it in front of them. There mm-hmm. is nothing more profound than a person seeing you live something and then you tell them what you live in right. instead of you doing this all the time to them and right. you ain't yeah, living nothing man, in front right. of them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it, man. I can smoke a bag. That's it. We can go. We go home, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, and let me just. I lived it in front of my son. I come up with shit to say because <laughs> yeah. I, well, ever since, ever since I knew yeah. you yeah. and <laughs> Willie and Zoe, yeah. you know. I love it. Was gonna be all on the same table I together. Like, yeah. I I thought of stuff, and I have to have the courage to say stuff that, like you said, putting in the work beforehand. I feel like you know me enough. Willie know me enough. Zoe know me enough. Well, I can ask questions like this. Yeah. Let's take for example, brother Drake. You had a little drama with the, with the, with with the system. You having drama with the system. How does that interfere? With all of the things you were taught coming up, having a dad who is a man of principle. You get what I'm saying? Unpack what? that. What do you mean me having a problem with the system? Oh, you get What do you mean? What do you mean interfering? No, I, I you guess what I'm trying to say, when you, had, when you got locked up, yeah. whatever led to that, yeah. what, what, were the principles gone astray for a while or something? What happened? Because a lot of people don't know what happened. It, I know you. Well, they seen know American Pimp. Saying, they know what happened. No, but are you saying because he had a dad? No, I'm uh, saying he's been. He, he was brought up in a way where you have knowledge. I know you. I know you're not yeah. stupid. Right. I'm right. saying, how did you get to the point where this there. jail drama was in your life? Oh, how did I get into the game? What, what led me that direction? Okay, well, is, is, just, is, it, is the answer just the game? No, I'm just saying. You're saying how? I'm trying to figure out. I, I don't clear. I don't I'm gonna clear try to make it as clear as I can. Make it cause you you had you had a situation where you was in jail. Yeah. A man as intelligent as you. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of intelligent people who are out here doing things that's gonna get them in trouble. They yeah. might not be in trouble yet. Yeah, yeah. So a man who's intelligent as you, how did you find yourself in Any that situation? situation, knowing everything you know? Well, my intelligence don't have nothing to do with the numbers game. If you stay doing some illegal stuff for a long period of time, that the percentage that. Gonna yeah. that you're going to catch yeah. up with you. Yeah. Right. I don't care who you are, how bright you are. Look, some of them brilliant, uh, Meyer Lansky is one of the most brilliant uh, uh, minds and uh, gangster back in the day. But at That's what I'm point, trying to bring if around. If you keep doing some wrong stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's bound to happen. Then it's bound to happen. Mm-hmm. So, it's you know, not just, got, it's not it, just. And it could be on a fluke like mine's was. It could be right. on a fluke. You know what I'm saying? When you say the, a fluke, what you mean? By happenstance. Like, I didn't do nothing really out of the, out of the, out of pocket to put myself in a situation. It was a fluke by some something else coming into the situation. Yeah. Okay. Like I was helping one of my girl's friends, and from that situation, that brought police into my house. Like when my man wore the mm-hmm. big fur coat at the um, something to that at the basketball oh. game, yeah, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, I get what Frank you're Lucas. saying. Rest right. in peace. He just mm-hmm. died. Yeah, 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 something yeah. like that. But that's not the point. The point fight. is the that point. What? It's a heavyweight boxing match. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a boxing match. I'm the sorry. point is you know, this. Boxing is my game. You know. However life befalls you, <laughs> my dad used to say to me, I always used to watch the juggler, but I always wanted to see what he'd do when he dropped the ball. So my father told me that life is going to happen. 
And then when life happens to you, you make sure you stay being who you say you were as a man. Mm. So it didn't matter the situation that happened. Mm. When, I'm, when you're on the street, you better be sold out to doing what you're doing. Because you're going to get ran over if you're not. So I was sold out at that time when I was in the game. For, the lame, for, 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 the, for the in layman's terms, when you say sold out, you mean committed to it. I was committed to the pimp game when I was doing it. Mm -hmm. Right. Sold out. Right. Got to be the biggest guy in the game at the time that I was doing it. Yeah, it is. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. My case was the first time the federal government and the, and the uh, state of Nevada came together to prosecute a pimp case. Huh. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when the situation happened to me, then I had to show up, which I said in American Pimp. People saw it. Ain't no sense you crying right now. Right. Just because they brought me, this is what I said in the movie. Just because they brought me to jail ain't going to stop me from being the man that I am. I was already determined to do whatever it was I was going to do, mm -hmm. but I was going to keep my manhood because my daddy had preached it so much and lived it, the value of manhood. So it was so valuable to me that I was going to do that life sentence with my manhood. Right. I you get what, what I'm you're saying. saying. I get yeah. what you're saying. And I'm glad you brought that up because I'm telling you, man, just like we were talking about earlier, there are so many people who are stuck, but when they hear certain people say things, it makes it clear for them. Mm -hmm. right. It makes it clear. Mm -hmm. they, they don't get to hear people say stuff like that right. or to hear stuff you saying, yeah. Willie D or, or, or Zoe. Hearing it from different perspectives, too. Right. There yeah. are people out here who are looking for the light. And the light can come out of your mouth just by talking for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some yeah. shit that make a motherfucker never go back to what he was doing because he heard something that confirmed. Mm. Right. God damn it. Really? I knew it. Yeah. This is how I'm supposed to be right. in yeah. this situation. And anybody trying to pimp out there right now is craziest in the world. Because anybody the law know? trying to pimp today, oh. you the stupidest person in the whole world. Oh, because oh, now oh, they're giving oh, you 100 it's years. On an app. It's 300 <laughs> years. Yeah. Say that again. You know what I'm saying? Who did not because know some that. dude just asked, what do you think about pimping? I don't advise this for my worst enemy. That's mm -hmm. what I think about it. Mm -hmm. Thank God I'm out of it. You know, an another thing, like touching on what you were saying about, you know, uh, uh, you know, how do you, you know, have that information and that leadership like he had and then get caught up like that? Mm -hmm. You know, temptation uh, needs doesn't need to be managed. You know what I'm saying? Like intelligence you. needs to be managed. Mm -hmm. You know, you uh, when you're intelligent, you know, you're constantly learning and you're constantly like thinking. With you don't have to think with temptation. It's like I hear something, it sounds good, whoop, mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. You know, that's temptation. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be managed. So that's why somebody can be as intelligent as Dre mm -hmm. or even myself mm -hmm. and get caught up. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, doing, I know about doing, temptation. Doing, doing something, you know what I'm saying, that right. we know that we know, shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. But the temptation. <laughs> you Do know, you ever master temptation? Stronger. Uh, no, we, we I, I, don't, I, I think you. I think you. Yeah. I think you. That's why I say. I think it's it levels needs, to it. That's why I say it don't need to be managed because mm -hmm. you can't. Ma I don't mm -hmm. think that you master temptation. Like right. you said, I you think know? you always. It's a constant. In fact, if mm -hmm. you can master temptation, I mean, you might as well. I mean, you'd be immortal. I mean, it's impossible. <laughs> I don't think it's possible. <laughs> yeah. I say you'd be immortal. <laughs> you'd be immortal. I don't. I don't think you can master temptation. Yeah. But you know, is it, but it's it's one of those things that I, I think that 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 you can you, you know. I, I, I know as far as a man, you know, it's, it's, it's two things that a, a man really, really has to learn to master. And that is, you know, number one, you know, a man has to, has to be able to control. He has to be able to, con to control his emotions. And he has to be able to control, excuse my French and part of my vernacular, but his dick. You know, you have to, yeah. you have to be able to do that. As a man, and and men who have grown and, and have reached a certain standard in life mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. understand it, they know exactly what I'm talking about, and they can do it. Mm-hmm. Anger, but, but, but anger look, no, you absolutely. Live anger out of that. Anger. Well, that's what anger. That's, that's, that's comes. That's come with the emotions. emotions. That's what. Mm -hmm. That's what all about. You know, controlling your emotions, because there were times when we would be on tour, and somebody would say, like, be in the audience heckling or something like that I jump out in the audience and beat their ass and then get back on stage and finish finish the, the show finish the show <laughs> you know the promoter we show up the promoter didn't have all the money bam you know lay it down for real get the bag go do the show you know so um, my sound wasn't right Hey, y'all say fuck the sound man. The whole crowd saying fuck the sound man. Sound man don't like that, so sound man cut the whole sound out. Go over there. Boop, 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 boop. Right. 
Get it right, get a new sound, man. <laughs> or you can try to finish the show with a black eye. And you, you mastered know? that. Being stopped from being that you know guy. Because yeah. you done told me yeah. stories yeah. and I knew you weren't lying, brother. Cause yeah. I watch people when they talk yeah. about the story you told me about uh when you went to Atlanta to get the hand of your yeah. motherfucking bitch yeah. with this motherfucker yeah. who was on bullshit with your buddy. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying like that's not the Willie D today because Yeah. yeah. It, it because it, of what? Well, well it's 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 because I, I'm in I'm in love with the idea of growth. Mm. I just feel like man, That's if beautiful. you live, if, like if you live this life, man, I just think that if you just doing the same shit right. that you was doing at 18, 20, 25, whatever, you know, even a year ago, you know, I need to see some growth. Otherwise, I don't feel too good. Yeah, you know, I right. need to know that okay, I'm a little further ahead. Even if even if it's not financially, you know, even if I don't have a bigger house, a nicer car, and uh, yeah, whatever. Just I just need to know a little bit more than what I knew last year. Mm -hmm. I can't right. I can't be stagnant. That's what wakes me up, growing like growth. Like I wake up with possibilities. Mm -hmm. I don't know where my life is going to take me, but I'm open to possibilities because I put myself out there and I'm willing to grow. Mm -hmm. So, so but that's let's check what, this out. Let me play yeah. devil's advocate right here for a minute. Do you think is that we want? to grow or what you said or do you think that as you get older you really want to okay. hold on to your time you get left do you think that has i mean because like that, that's that's part of it i, I mean a bunch of old it. fools yeah. out there <laughs> well, well, that's, yeah that's <laughs> what you say they got a bunch of yeah. old fools out there yeah that's that's, that, that's 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 definitely a part of it you mm -hmm. know like you 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 start you value you see how reckless some of the things that you did like like I, I I had I should have been killed at least four five hundred times. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Like I, no, I, I, I believe you. I believe yeah. you. I believe mean, so, you. Or others by you. Yeah, you know, it's people that done a lot less than I did mm. that we're walking on right now. Mm -hmm. So so what I did is that I was started looking at it like I started looking at it more like divine intervention. I'm like, man, I'm here for a reason. Like. You know, like God got some bigger plans. He showed favor. It wasn't all me, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I had to take some some responsibility for my actions, but I felt like God showed me favor, and I was like, I got work to do, right? You know, right. I, I, I'm here for a reason. Mm -hmm. I'm not just no dude, mm -hmm. just out here partying and bullshitting and making babies and 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 just die. I ain't that dude, right? Know? I'm finna, I got some shit to do before I get up out of here. Right. Check this out, yeah. 5150 Nation. This is what I want to say to y'all. And I, I know y'all have said on the chat room, and I just want this to be part of what I what I echoed while I was alive. When you around men, if you are or really desire to be a man, you're going to act like those people. Mm. You're going to see something in somebody that you know is what's up for real. Mm -hmm. This is how motherfucker right. supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm a loner, but I'm fascinated when I'm around <laughs> motherfucking men. Yeah. I'm talking what, what everybody say, real niggas. That's what we say. You around some real niggas. Look, let me tell you something. I ain't got no shame to say when I'm around motherfuckers who I feel like are 100. I'm almost like pudding. I cool the fuck out. I be like, what, what's up? What the fuck? I'm finna soak in fucking mm -hmm. with these motherfuckers right here. <laughs> and I'm saying, it's why I was really happy to have, you know what I'm saying, two more guys right. that I feel like got something to say on the show. Because I'm soaking in all this shit both of them talking about. I soak in shit Zoe talk right. about. But Look, when I first met Zoe, I didn't know. I could listen to him because of how his voice sounds, <laughs> which is some crazy <laughs> shit. Because when I first met Zoe, you know, Zoe, when he was on relax mode, his voice ain't got a lot of bass in it. Yeah. It's got, I mean, your voice got bass in it, but I'm saying, it's like, when I first met Zoe, Zoe was like, yo, so, I was like, who the fuck is that nigga? But <laughs> you grew, and it's okay. No, when I got to listening to him, <laughs> I recognized his vocabulary, I recognized his. He wasn't saying shit and not talking about the shit he was saying. He was bagging up the shit he was saying. And he's being clear. I, right. I was right. smart enough to recognize that. Right. That's why I'm kind of hypnotized. I be like, what the mm -hmm. fuck? This nigga, okay, this ain't no regular nigga out here just running his motherfucking mouth. Because uh -huh. I catch on to them motherfuckers right away. Them motherfuckers who just running their mouth. I be like, ah, nigga, you one of them niggas. All right, fuck you. So 
I'm just saying, <laughs> Dre, uh, my man Willie D, who Willie D fascinates me when I talk to him on the phone because he'll go into a story. That'll be about 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, but it'd be good. I'm yeah. like, yes, yeah. yeah. So it's I'm just saying, I ain't got no shame with my Don't game, man. I love <laughs> being around real motherfuckers. But, we love, but you're a real cat, though, Corey. I mean, for real, for you to be able to... Uh, to be able to recognize yeah, and come, it. But, but come yeah. from Chicago, go through that Hollywood scene. They try to ostracize you. You got back and on your back, build your own brand and rolling around the country doing your thing, yeah, man. That, that takes ain't. tenacity yep. and fortitude. Mm-hmm. It take a real cat to be that man. Yeah, and man. It, it just I, I as much as you, you honored with us, that. I'm honored to be around you, family. That's what's up. Yeah. I appreciate it, real, man. Real, real. So let me say one thing, man, because uh, honored to be Willie D was saying something everybody powerful earlier. Table. Huh? Everybody, everybody at this table, I'm honored to be around him. Because if I felt like you wasn't shit, I wouldn't have you around me. It's true. Yeah, I want to go into some emotional. You know, we're talking about men and their emotions, and you know, a lot of time we we bring things out of our life that we can apply to our new life. Because when I was in the game. You know, it was important for you to continue your, uh, keep your composure, have poise, right? Mm-hmm. So let me just put this in. My brother was killed in 2016 over in Seattle. So I went up to Seattle and opened up my organization that's called Not This Time. So the first week that I was there, I sat down with the chief of police. And see, the system, they're, they're normally used to us having a reaction. And I said, you guys are not going to get a reaction out of me because we lose a narrative when we give you a reaction. I'm going to give you a response, but you got to have poise. you got to maintain your emotions. Now, these people just killed my brother. I'm going to go sit down with this police chief, and I did, right? So I told her, I said, you know, I know I can't get my brother back, but I'm still willing to work with you to reduce the incidences of violence in our communities. She was shocked because she was waiting for that reaction. Mm -hmm. But I gave her a response, and that allowed us to control the narrative. So in three years' time, through my organization, Washington State is the first state in the whole nation that has a police accountability law. Hmm. There's nobody else in the country that has a police accountability law. Explain Mm -hmm. police accountability law, please. Well, in our state, because of the work we did for three years, a police officer can't, can't say he feared for his life. So I got attorneys together. They wrote the law the way we wanted it for the community. And we beat them in November, 60%. But what we did is I went to the Latino community, the Native community, the Asian Pacific Islander community, and said we've been fighting this stuff by ourselves, and we need to come together. So they, we all came together, and we built the log, largest coalition in that state, and together we beat them. So now police officers can't get away with killing one of our people no more in Washington State. Hmm. So where, now I want to... Where was the law implemented? The law was passed when the election happened in November. Okay, so right. ha- so have, has there been a police shooting? I was just going yeah. There's some police shootings, and but so with that new law. With the new with law, so, yeah. so have, have we, have, have y'all, have, has y'all been able to, to see stage. the result? We haven't got to that stage yeah. because when somebody is killed in Washington State, there's an inquest process that happens, so it's a journey before we get there. Okay. But everybody that's been killed in that state this year, is, them police is up underneath this, this new law. You know what I'm saying? So... System folks know about what we did. It's just the urban community don't know about what we did, mm-hmm. you know, because our community is so gung ho on entertainment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But white folks is worrying about what's going on politically because they control things politically, mm-hmm. right? So now what I want to do is be able to go around the country in different cities and give them the blueprint of how we won police accountability in Washington State. We created history there, mm-hmm. so that's what we're gonna be doing, going around the country, giving brothers this game. This, but this is what we did. But we brought other people though. We brought Mexicans in. We brought Asian Pacific Islanders in. Because everybody benefit. Mm-hmm. Everybody's yeah. affected by police exactly. shootings too. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we want it. Wow. You that's know? What's up. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. That's what's up. No, that's powerful. What, what time Very. is it? Because I know we Shit. gotta. That's powerful. What time is it? Nine fourteen. I don't know how many. Nine fourteen. That so is powerful. We um like this. Let's is, see what it co- what comes. Man, up. this is the type of conversation that, that changes this move, things. Yeah. This is the type of conversation that is going to be somebody who's sitting at home, who never heard black men get together and talk like this. And I'm not saying it's because black men don't get together and talk like this. It's just it might not be a situation where it catches their eye. Mm-hmm. But I know it's going to catch their eye with this bullshit we all got on today. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hella colorful. Right. <laughs> Willie D got on his rugby outfit. And got that uh, <laughs> 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 I'm just saying. So Somebody see this on the internet, they're going to stop and so say, what the fuck going on over out. here? I got on my motherfucking too much. Got them. Those militant. Got them. Uh, Zoe yeah. hiding his head. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you don't shut your hey, fluffy hey. ass. Can, can, can you, I want it, because there'd be so many people doubting. Can I, can I show a clip where it says ex-pimp uh, uh, responsible for uh, police accountability? Hell yeah. I, I'm it's, a, it's, if, it's better if we show it right after the break. I'm gonna Frank, say, I'm Frank, I'm gonna after the break, we're going to have that up and we'll jump right back into it. Okay. Mm-hmm. But because right people now, be doubting and stuff. They don't know what's happening. I want them to, let them to see some evidence. That's what's up. She, she can um, show Frank over there. Okay. Here, let me get find it. a way to get it on there. Yeah. She Frank will get it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, they'll do it. They'll figure yeah. it out. Right now, we're going to get to this part of the show that oh, um, is to do it. tolerated, <laughs> as we say. We joke with the homegirl, D. D the only, <laughs> look, D, the only female up here, and she Mexican. <laughs> so, what does that mean? I'm Not just really. saying, I know we expect you to um, get that lawnmower started. But look, what I'm saying is, <laughs> this is the part of the show that has been part of the show since... <laughs> Is it the beginning of the show? We didn't used to yes, do this. Yes, we did, back in the but day. you didn't call it. It wasn't called loose. Talk. What was it called? It was just. It was called de talking. <laughs> de talking. <laughs> I have to look at some. We were able to film it. Remember, it was just all audio. Right. For, for well, nowadays, this portion of the show is what D say shit and we comment on it. D's loose, loose talk, talk about bullshit. Yeah, and it is just that. What as you we come said. up with, D? What you come up All with? All right, so speaking of that, it's a good um, I actually skipped stories because I want to say it's a perfect segue mm. we, for your 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 cause what you just uh, th- th- this right here is is bothering me and I'm pretty sure everybody in the nation that is aware of this case you probably remember, Corey, the uh, story back in 2017 about the unarmed um, white woman that was fatally shot by mm. a police officer after she had called oh, 911 yeah, 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 to yeah. report a possible sexual assault that may be happening behind her home in that an alley. in Minnesota? Yes. Well, now mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. Minneapolis mm-hmm. police officer mm. that shot her was just found guilty of third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter. However, many folks are calling foul because in this case, unlike a lot of the other ones, Almost all of them, uh, unlike them. Um, this officer's name is Mohammed Noor. He's a Somalian born Muslim. Mm-hmm. And in his testimony, he said, and this just again sounds familiar because a lot of the cases, but most of the cops were white. Um, he said uh, in his testimony that when he and his partner were checking out the alley behind her residence, they heard a loud bang on the car. Then he saw a blonde woman in a pink shirt raise her arm near the window where his partner was, and that's why he fired his gun, to protect his partner's life. Hmm. Anyway, the six, of the six of the 12 jurors were people of color, two being women. That took him less than 12 hours to find him guilty. So apparently, um, Officer Knorr was the first police officer in Minnesota history to be convicted of murder while in the line of duty. Um, they say that institutional prejudices against people of color, including officers of color, have heavily influenced this verdict. The verdict in this case, um, and of course, the uh, the attorney's office um, say they deny race had any role in this case. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, listen, I, I, that's listen, that's him. I, we all know the bullshit <laughs> goes across the board. The cops kill somebody. It depends on who the cop was. <coughs> I mean, I can't, I, you, get, you got some cop example. who is from Somalia and he a Muslim and all that. I wouldn't expect him <clears> to come out of that case without nothing happening. Now that's just me. I would, but I you just shot a white woman in the alley. <laughs> I wouldn't expect him to come out of that case in no city not help in this nation know? without <laughs> him losing. You just shot a white woman. But we ain't used to saying it just like that. We're mm-hmm. used to saying all the stuff that's... It's yeah. like you skipped the elephant in the room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When he went back to the goddamn... What, 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 what is the place where they go? What, back roll the call? What, back when he was a roll call the next day, they was like, oh, this You just shot a white man? <laughs> you just shot a white man? You are out of here. <laughs> it's over, <laughs> man. I, I can just imagine what it was like. Uh, in the and then Somalian or something? He's Somalian, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And when Don't I you know that... Go ahead. You know, you know when they become overzealous after you do something to a, to a, a white woman, whether you are just a suspect 
or you actually did it I don't think that they know that they make people hate white women mm. they they make people hate white women mm-hmm. because because they're treating, treating them so special mm-hmm. and white women a lot of white women think that the system really care about them Be, you know because when something happens to this white woman especially if a black person does something to a white woman a black man mm-hmm. they lose their minds oh we got to lynch him we got to get 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 him mm-hmm. But they really don't care about white women like that. <coughs> and now later, boy. That's indicative. <laughs> Stop. Stop. That's indicative of all of these rapes mm-hmm. that, that you see in America, uh, even by sitting Supreme Court justices. The president himself has been accused of raping several women. Yes. The, you mm-hmm. know, a sitting president. Mm-hmm. America doesn't care about rape victims. Especially white rape victims, they just don't. They only act like they care if somebody black does something to a black a white woman, mm. because they'll take any excuse they can get to do harm to a black man. They don't care about the white woman. Uh, white men rape white women and kill white women all the time. Mm. They they kidnap white women all the time. There's no major searches mm-hmm. for these white women. There's no major justice for them. Ninety five percent of rape kits in America go untested. America does not care about rape victims. It's it's a it's a fucking it's all smoke and mirrors. It's a game. Mm. They don't care about white women. White women get their ass beat all the time by white men. Stop mm-hmm. it, John. They just I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? And, and I and I, I don't mean to you know, sound so graphic or whatever. No, it's just it's care, just you dropping, it's you're dropping the knowledge. They white women get beat up all the time by white men. They just you just don't see it. You don't see the reports. Right. But especially white cops. White cops are the most abusive uh they, they uh, per, per capita mm-hmm. they have they are the most abusive uh uh men uh uh you know in the job force mm-hmm. the cops, cops cops abuse their women more than any other sector of business period mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they are beaters they women they women beaters uh. but if a black man uh gets accused of swinging on his woman the police gonna swoop through and five six seven eight nine cars and come out kicking ass and the woman sitting over there thinking yeah you know the cops got my back they don't have your back they don't give a shit about you mm-hmm. they just want to beat they just want any kind of excuse to, to fuck this black dude up and put him in jail and run him through the system that's yeah. some 100 shit yeah. that's some yeah. 100 shit uh, let, me, let me back that up uh, with some st- statistics uh, mm-hmm. you're right about that 44 percent of law enforcement officers uh, committed domestic violence in the country mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the rest of the population is 12 percent so he's absolutely right about that wow 44 mm-hmm. percent I'm, I'm making a t-shirt so, they, know, well, they know they can get away with it i know several <laughs> yeah. i know several of my friends that are married and one, she's one of them's married to one of a cousin of mine who's a police officer and that was a big story that she told me about is that it's most true. of the women that she's friends of in that same precinct they all are battered you are better women. And they say because who comes to their rescue? Who comes to that yeah. call when they make it is his brothers. Is, is there. Yeah. His people. Yeah, they, so they, 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 they wise, how are we gonna have a chance? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We got a chance. You know, right. you got to manage your wife, you come out, uh, you know, trying to police folks. You know, yeah, they say you walk off. it off, walk it off, go talk you know to what her. I'm yeah. You know what's the trip is that like I know women who uh who are hesitant about dating police officers. I've seen them, they were like hesitant about dating police officers mm-hmm. because, you know, like, yeah, if, if mm-hmm. he turns out to be a nut you know where do I go? You, do? you know mm-hmm. you, yeah. how do I get protection? So, yeah, I don't but, but the thing about it, either. but the thing about <laughs> it is that they'll go there anyway, right. and it might wow. take. It, sometimes it only take a month for them to realize I got to get the hell out of this dude. It's a psycho, mm. and sometimes it takes six years. Mm. But almost all of them. You know, in so are you saying there is an ass whooping yeah. that makes that light bulb pop up? It's just some girls is six months, but some girls is six years. But the light bulb coming. Yeah, they 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 all might have even know. been there before they got married, and they just enough is enough. They still yeah. accepted that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. Go ahead, anyway. D. What all right, moving got? on to something, of course, super light. Jovial? Um, is that the word? No. Oh, just no. Just lighter. I guess, Joe. It's still silly, really, but it's interesting. Anyway, so you know that Wendy Williams, uh, she's newly single now after 22 mm-hmm. years, and she's been in L.A. She just hit the L.A. streets this past week partying up yeah. with Black China. 
who she calls her little sister now. She was also hanging with the Kardashians because <laughs> now her beef with the Kardashians is Hope over. Get that cocaine. And she's been bragging on her Instagram <laughs> about the many men that are knocking down her door. As a matter of fact, she actually was posting up. Her knees look healthy. Look she at that was, picture. Wait, that's the new uh, guy. Anyway, yeah, the knee so transplant. So she's also been seen a few <laughs> times with this new fella. Wait, he looks, he is pretty young. Yeah, anyway. Um, he, she's a hot commodity. She posted up this Instagram of her husband. <laughs> up with him he's got then they were caught shopping out in la she's getting money out of the atm blah, blah, blah. anyway you know how you know how social media is so the moment that she put this up look apparently she met the kid and i call kid because he's my son's age he's 27 and that dude is 27 yes yes but you know how it goes so anyway she put these pictures up of her with him they even got her on videotape they were coming out of roscoe's but she started getting emotional because they asked her paparazzi asked her about her husband and all that and she said she really didn't want that to happen but oh well you know he he did me the way he did it and i'm out here so i'm single anyway <laughs> the moment she put they caught her with this guy People were like, "Oh, it's a, it's a, it's an unknown person." Whatever. But minutes later, you know, how social media is. They're like, "Oh, here he is." So apparently, they put his picture out there and all his information. So he has a rap sheet, and of course, she says, "Oh, I knew, I knew." I don't know. Uh, so the public put it out there. He um, actually would serve some time um, for robbery, armed robbery. Um, he ain't got to rob nobody no more. Yeah. Yeah, and and they actually saw them uh, when she was leaving L.A. He went with her, so they left. Uh, he, they even have him in New York. There he is now. The next day, she got day. that paper. She, he's in New York. Uh, his name is Mark Tamblin. He's 27 years old, and he's a fashion designer. Apparently, like I said, he served time. She's 53, and she said when they approached her and said, "Hey, you know, you know, you're seeing this younger guy, everything." She said, "Hey, I'm a 54 year old grown ass woman." I know what I'm doing. Also, she said, hey, look, my husband had, and this sounds funny, but this is the word she used. My husband had a full baby with a woman he was involved with for 15 years. You I, ain't finna have no baby. Shush up. And she says, where I was cooped up only to be a show pony. Now I'm living my life. <laughs> Wait, did she say she was a show pony? <laughs> that's, a she, that's the word she used. I was cooped up only to be a show pony. Now I'm living my life. Show mule. <laughs> so apparently she met this guy when she was out partying with Black China. They've been all over the city, so I don't know. I you just keep you keep dodging the elephant in the room, Wendy Williams. Show you. you make sure you get these pictures of you walking uh, a certain way. It's a shot and all that. But you ain't finna show no picture of you getting out the shower and wiping your face off with the towel. Because oh. that'll fuck everybody up. <laughs> so Stop. keep showing these glamour shots. Maybe it's working for you, God damn it, but <laughs> I see, camel. right, I see through. I mean, but here's my thing. I Dude hustling. I, I don't know if you'll agree with me or not. I mean, I know, because there's a lot of people that were uh, responding to her, you know, on, where you could see it on her feed on Instagram, like other famous people like Tony Braxton, people like that going, you go, girl, that's right, you do you, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, first thing I thought was, well, wait, didn't your... I don't know. I don't we know need a TV heart. show Didn't, to respond to the famous people that's <laughs> egging her on. Wait a second. <laughs> like, Tony, shut your sick ass up and shit like that. <laughs> no, 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 not Tony, bro. What's the other one I mean? I'm oh. sorry. What's the other, uh, uh, the sister? Tamar. <laughs> Tamar, I'm sorry. So, Tamar, not Tony Plett. Oh, no, it's Tamar. What is Tamar? Tamar. Tamar. Well, you be like, shut your fired ass up. You know what Stop. I mean? It's anyway. always something awful to say about anybody. No, but my I, I read the <sighs> comments on me. I, I didn't heard it all. Oh, so, <laughs> like, but that's how you can reach her. You can actually re reply to her. You know how if you go on somebody's Instagram, you could reply to what No, Tamar they take said. my Instagram when I reply. Oh, but they, I'm just when saying. When I reply, they be like, you can't say that. But anyway, so a lot of people were replying to her, you know, like that, like egging her on. Like, you go, girl, do that. First thing that came to my mind was like, wait a second. Your son is over here having problems and issues with your husband and what happened and what he did. I don't see where this but is. But you're not, you're not telling people is, what happened. You're talking about. They had a fight. Remember, the son is, is he's like, he's not getting along with the dad. Who knows what, what Wendy's telling him. Or, but again, also, he's seeing stuff in the press. But I'm just saying. Now, all of a sudden, you're out here doing what you want to do as a 54-year-old woman. He's 19 still, so it's very important. I mean, he's 19 she, or 27? He's 19, the, her son. Oh, her son. What I'm saying right. is mm -hmm. what you, you were just saying. Like, look, I mean, I know she was probably like, wow, my son's having these problems with his, what's going on with this divorce. This is so not helping. 
I mean, it's different if you're out there having a good time and you're dating, but just to, to a bunch of, you know, talking about, oh, I got men galore. Not you mean putting it on display, is that the problem? You with have? the younger guy as well, too. Like, just out there. You right away out there doing something. I, hey, y- yeah, you're human. Yes, you could. Ha- you should have your life, too, but. She ha- she got to be happy. That Bigfoot must be I'm in the I'm just air. saying. I don't know. I don't feel. I, I feel like that would bother the that kid, That hoods need to be held up by somebody. <laughs> I'm just saying. But does everybody have to know that? I think that this is one of those things that these women do where they think, ooh, look, I'm going to show him. Do you know what I'm saying? I think she's doing it on oh, purpose. Man. Not like it's making her happy. I mean, they just had her out the other night and that she started crying when they started talking to her. That nigga big ass motherfucker. The big ass skis on the yeah. bottom of her foot. But he ain't seeing anyway. that shit. She got paper. She got a TV I show. I know why all that if is I'm happening. I'm out there with Wendy, y'all niggas couldn't tell me shit. Shit. I mean, fuck I'm just saying, I don't think that that's helping the whole the situation out. <laughs> that's all. Anyway, I'm that, not one of those. Go, girl, you do you. I was like, uh, that's maybe. That's what you got, D. Yeah. So I was all like, right. maybe not. No. Uh, we're going to take a look, quick break, and we're going to come back from this deep conversation. Wendy, you know I'm just joking. I wish you the best, girl. You go out there and get it, goddammit, on the Sasquatch side of the game. Oh. Uh, this is 5150 Show. We shall return, motherfucker. 
<laughs> During the break, uh, we was talking some shit, and uh, my man, uh, my man Dre said something, and, and my man Willie D commented on it, and I just thought it was something that needs to be shared with the fifty one fifty nation. Dre, you were saying what about the ex life? A lot of people be stuck on my ex life, you know, and I be wanting to get them brought up. But Willie said something else. And his response. Yeah, I was just saying that the people that stuck on your ex life. They're stuck on everybody's ex life, mm. including their own. For Look real. And they ain't going no fucking way. Wow. They're just stuck in neutral. Yeah. Them people like that. Yeah, it's that's people, what I it's, call them. It's people mm-hmm. like that. Exactly, man. They, they ain't going nowhere. And they really just don't fucking matter. They're yeah. so easy to sw- swat away. Like, they have, like, their arguments are very weak. They can be destroyed, like, immediately. Yeah. Like, yeah. they're nothing. Like, yeah. They ain't going nowhere. The, the children ain't gonna be shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I love it. You know, uh, that sounds like something Corey would have said. <laughs> hey, I'm a, no, I mean, like I agree with hey, him. I'm I've a, been a, around man. girls and kids <laughs> <laughs> that I know ain't gonna be shit. I'm but I'm the bad guy for saying it. Yeah, I know nah. that boy ain't gonna be shit. Now, the children <laughs> got a passion for The children, <laughs> children ain't gonna be shit, bro, because they're unlearned. They're yeah. being they're being taught by somebody that's unlearned. Mm. Yeah. Do you and think so, some kids are born not shit? No, 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 no. No, no they learn. No. This is where we. It's this is where we disagree. I believe it's all learned behavior. Yeah, I believe it's all learned behavior, just like racism. It's learned behavior. Yeah. What about boys who like boys? Learned behavior. You don't think nobody born think, like that? Well, you know what? Let me take that back. They got some stuff now, going on now. Now, mm-hmm. now they're they're they're, they're, they're putting yeah. chemicals and stuff into mm-hmm. the food supply, and so now you know they they're actually manipulating. Uh, hormones now, you know, say, oh, well, by, by, by the ingredients that they now. put in foods. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, I, I do that now believe it. I didn't believe it at right. first, yes. but I do believe right. now yeah. that a lot of boys are are uh, born that way now. Mm-hmm. Born um, with backdoria. That's what we call well, it. You know, just, just just you know, born born with a preference. You know, for for you know, having same sex. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. dealing with dudes. You know, like. I can and be I friends with I can be friends with people like that as I've gotten older. When I was younger, I, ignorance made me feel like, oh, you're not supposed to be friends with people like that. But yeah. I'm saying like, if a man likes to be with men, I can be friends with a man who likes to be a man, but likes to be with men. But yeah. when I get mad at you, I'm gonna talk shit that you like men. Oh. So did that did that make me a bad guy? Well, well, I, I, well, you know, if you get mad at anybody, I mean, you know, the, the, the name <laughs> of the game. You gonna say what's on the game is to go low. <laughs> you gotta go low, and then put your foot on their neck. So, <laughs> it, <laughs> hey, it's all game. You know, it's all <laughs> fair game. It's all fair and love and war. Right. When you get mad, yeah. When you get mad, man, you know, that's why. I Like when you get mad and you're around people that you love, especially, it, it's best to just cool off, man. Just step away, cool off, because you're gonna say something that you regret. You're not going to be able to take back. And even if you say, I'm sorry, they'll never forget, especially women. Mm-hmm. Women don't forgive and they don't forget. People used to say, well, women, we forgive, but we don't forget. No, they don't forget. Cause if you for- <laughs> because if you forgave, you know, you would forget about it. I mean, you would leave it alone. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't keep bringing it back right, up. Get that dough. You know? So, so you, might, you, may not for- you may not forget about it, but you won't keep bringing it up, right? right. So right. that means that if you say... <laughs> God damn! <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like on the movie Alien and shit. <laughs> so, so if, if 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 you say that you forgive, and you wait for that moment that you can throw something back in a person's face, you never forgave that person. And every woman that I've ever been with that forgave me about something I did that was very egregious, right? <laughs> Re-cook they always that reminded me <laughs> of what I did wrong. How about and that? Yet, and they're still with you. Yeah, well, you that's know, interesting. Well, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Well, the, the way you equal, the, <laughs> keep complaining. The way you equalize uh-huh. that is that you do some forgiving from her. So if I've unforgiven her for some things, yeah. then you know, I can I can actually throw some things up in your face also. Yeah, but I, I went. Can, yeah, but, you see what I'm saying? But, I'm saying, but, but, yeah, but equalize that goes thing. back to being a man. You know, like we don't we don't play them type of games. Right. Yeah, but, but, but I'm saying that's when, that's that. when you got yeah. the lead. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, say, you. you see what I'm saying? Said, that's when you got that's the what lead. I said, but they're yeah. still in it. When people do that, yeah. complain, 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 but they are still in that situation. Oh yeah, yes, I have learned that women in poverty who have a nice purse. If you pee in that purse, they'll get the fuck away from you. That's what I've learned what? in my time on this planet. I don't know what y'all. I don't know what y'all been through. I'm just saying I've been through some shit. You pee in a broke girl who got a nice purse, purse. 
She'll break up with you over that. I'm you just saying. You probably call the police on you too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, but they ain't got no charge for that. Yeah. You did something like purse. that before, bro? <laughs> what? You did Probably. that? Didn't I done peed in a purse before. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, <laughs> dog? The quality purses don't leak. I noticed that. Quality purses don't leak. If it, <laughs> oh, if it leak, that Louis ain't real, bitch. That shit ain't supposed to come out of that. Clear, if you, if you peed in somebody's <laughs> purse. I believe it. <laughs> we got to talk because I know you did some more shit. <laughs> you did some crazy shit to me. It's just you ain't saying it. Wait, I no, ain't I, peed in no purse. I mean, you, think, you, think, you think my peeing in the probably, purse is worse than shit you did? No, nah, no. Nah, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like, yeah, I, I'm a lot of things, but as far as like, being like nasty, I ain't nasty. That's nasty. <laughs> That's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> it's nasty to you because it ain't your pee. Yeah. I'm blessing that purse. Nah, I nah, baptize nah. purse. To me, I feel like that's almost like, like almost like spitting somebody's food say, or something yeah, yeah. like that. Like I wouldn't eat stuff like that. If I, if I felt that, like that much anger toward a person. I'd make them feel it, like really feel the pain. Like, like what would you do? I mean, you know, feel physical, physical yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> pain. Like, you ain't gonna say what you would do, <laughs> you know what you, but you would do something yeah. egregious. Peeing in a purse ain't egregious. Spitting in a purse, now that's disrespectful. <laughs> but pissing in a purse, that's trying to work it out with a motherfucker. You know I don't want to go down the road of the worst thing you, you never did. did. <laughs> Say that again. I don't want to go down the road. The worst thing you never did, as far as a woman is concerned. I'm talking right. the worst thing we I, all have done. Yeah, I don't want to. That's, I'm that's saying a, like we got stuff I'm, we just don't want to talk I'm, about. I I just was bold enough to admit I peed in a couple of purses. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't it ain't worse than taking car keys. I hate when girls take your car keys and you can't go. Speaking of car keys, grab this car key. <laughs> I'm just saying we do petty shit. Like shit. Everybody's doing petty shit. Now? Are you talking about nowadays or when you were a teenager? Well, when you oh no, like I'm 20s. saying, like, but it's not the twenties. You done petty shit in your thirties. You sound. Weird. You said in your book you was chasing. Uh oh. Somebody in a car. Uh yeah, I was twenty. 20- Seven? 27 oh, close enough to 30. I'd already had my son. Yeah, because he was in the car with us. He was little. You put him in danger. You put 20. the son in that's danger trying said, to chase somebody in the car. That's, that's worse than pissing in a purse. Trying to skip it. Trying to, <laughs> trying to block it. Okay, but you, you know, know what you did. Shit you like probably this, you peed know? in that purse last year. No, I didn't pee in that purse last year. It's been at least more years than that. Uh-huh. We we talking you know, talking about the shit you embarrassed about. I think that's therapy. Stuff that you did that you really be like, what the fuck was I on? Exactly. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's yeah, therapy yeah, yeah. when you get it out. Right. Of course. You don't want to go to hell with it. <laughs> Zoe, you ever did something you ashamed of? Oh man. <laughs> Come on. So, oh man. Of course. Besides you beating up Aries. You know, <laughs> You haven't lived. <laughs> Zoe, ah! it, he don't like talking about he it. Like that's talking why I'm with him. Uh, so you had a, a great win in front of the nation. You elbowed dude <laughs> up under the table, man. Not. That's something to tell your grandkids about. I, I remember was back I when... I was just talking about that the other day yeah, in some sure interview. Was, and I, and I never heard Zoe talk about it in public until Aries had this last interview with it, the yeah. brother Vlad. And Zoe, you was talking about it. Zoe, you saw that interview? Yeah. Yeah, you saw it. You didn't appreciate that. Mm. Just let it go. Do. I mean, you know. Yeah. You don't even talk about it no more, man. If we was on the basketball court, it would have been over. Yeah. What do you mean basketball court? Ooh. You said, oh, you said like if y'all was out somewhere where. Yeah, on the court. That, you know, it would have been over. Aerie Air, Spears, I, this, this is what you, this is what you have to understand That's about Aerie Spears. I know him good enough to say this. I've never seen him fight anybody his size. Not one time. But I have seen him get into a lot of fights with women and little dudes. It's documented that he took a bat to his wife back in the day. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm just putting him out there. Hey, Aries, I know you said in the interview what you could have did and all that. I'm just telling you, I don't believe you. I believe you a whole ass motherfucker. (laughs) And you took your L and you was geeking people up. And they was like, leave that shit alone because they know you was a whole ass motherfucker who ain't going to bite bread. But I'm just saying, Aries. I see you and we'll talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I want to get to the bottom of it. I don't know if we can get to the bottom of it by me talking shit from no here. Right. No, it's a bottom of it when you talk to some people. Sometimes when you sit down and you have a unless conversation it, with somebody when you meet. Unless apologizes for his behavior. I mean, how, what is there a bottom of that? The no, no, thing. talking face-to-face to people can fix things sometimes. Fix, but in that scenario, in that case, in his case, with this show, what, what, what can be fixed? 
talking to him. Looking this, at him well, face it to sounds face. like he's grown. What do Bottom you mean? line is, is you can't disrespect a man for two hours. Or if we or weren't on, if we weren't show, on a goddamn yeah. show, mm-hmm. it was just like I said on a basketball court. I mean, it, it probably would have, you know, y'all would have been hooping and it would have escalated, and then we got into it, and then we would have been done and, and play some ball, some more ball. But the bottom line is, you know, disrespect and then don't hide behind comedy. Oh, he can't. He, 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 I'm Jones in and he was sensitive. Let's see, this is what men do. At the end of the day, my reaction to him was wrong on my part. Why you say that? But because I could have handled it a different way. How? You know, I could have just not said anything. I could have not responded like the brothers outlined earlier. I could have just said, let me just hold it for another minute. And get the fuck up out of here, cause this nigga crazy. And then but I didn't do could, that. Then afterwards he could have said, but I, but I didn't do right? that. So is it so, a difference between between when somebody who is getting out of line and you can whoop them versus somebody who getting out of line you don't think you can whoop? What is the difference? Is there, is there a difference or what? I'm first saying off, like, like my my peoples need to understand two things: either either I'm sensitive or I got the patience of Job. See, I, I you could say I'm sensitive. If I fire off in 60 seconds, right? I go from zero to 160 seconds, right? Oh, that nigga's sensitive. But if I sit here for two hours and in between breaks, I'm coaching a motherfucker and say, hey, man, Don't do listen this, right? to Corey. Follow his lead. Do this, do that. Hey, man, you tripping a little bit. If I do that for two hours and you keep disrespecting, you keep touching, you keep encroaching on my personal space. I mean, what if it was Dante Wilder doing it? It doesn't oh, matter who the fuck it is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, just, it does. That's when we lie to each other. Oh, no, that's not true. Oh, it doesn't. It's not true. Oh, okay. Okay. That's not true. So let me ask you this: Are you uncomfortable about uncomfortable about the situation because? It might prevent you from being in certain platforms because people think. No, that I'm not concerned about because that. Because you might be, they see you as a violent individual now, and, and no. or is it just you believe that you were just out of control at the time? No, I, I'm not concerned about any of that. Right. Um, well, what is it that bothers you most about the <laughs> incident? No, because you said this something. This is the thing so that's curious. funny to me. Corey <laughs> keeps this shit going. <laughs> I be fucking with he Joe because I know he uncomfortable week, about it. I'm only talking about it because every week I heard, the boy, I heard old boy talk about it the other day, and it I was just passing, again, and then right. it came up. And so I, I know Zoe, and I wanted. I said, "Well, I wonder how Zoe feel about what the guy's saying." Well, I mean, you know, I mean, he, he's entitled to his opinion, but like I said, man, I, I started in radio damn near 11, 12 years ago. I started with Jamie Foxx's Foxhole Radio. I grew up with Freeze Love. I've been signifying and joking with motherfuckers for years. So when we met, he was joking, right? So to say, "Oh, this nigga's sensitive because I'm signifying," no, you disrespectful. And one thing you're not gonna be—I don't let—I don't let my sons disrespect me. I don't let coworkers disrespect me. You understand what I'm saying? You gonna respect who the fuck I am hmm. at the end of the day. And now, if I warn you, and I and I tell you, like, "Hey, you out of pocket. You out of line." For two hours, mm. then you need to acknowledge that you know. Well, maybe I was drinking, maybe I was you know tripping a little too much. Mm. Because guess what? If you out in the street with motherfuckers you don't know, and you doing that kind of shit, I yeah. mean anything could happen. Mm-hmm. But he don't do that out in That's the street. Exactly clearly, right, right. <laughs> That's why I laugh it off. Cause. I mean, come on, man. I helped the man up off the ground, and I walked him <laughs> to his car. I I know what it is. I look, Let me tell you something, man. I don't want to. Why didn't help him, Corey? I, we did. What do you mean he helped him? I, why you didn't try to save him or something? Say, why you didn't pull Joe off, man? I did eventually. We did. Yeah. We, we I, did. I, D, uh-huh. I started moving when I saw D start moving. Oh, D okay. was like uh, commentating. <laughs> <laughs> Indirectly, she was like, "Oh, oh, 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 oh man, just got through calling me a Mexican bitch, so of course right. I wasn't gonna rush over there." So. I, I mean, like, I first of all, I couldn't believe what? it happened. Yeah, you know he did. Watch that show again. You yeah, he, he he called D out her he name. He said, "Oh, are you Asian?" He called her a bitch. No, he called oh, D a I bitch. You were Mexican bitch. He oh. tough around women and little dudes. <laughs> Like, what? But I'm just saying, he he get that. He I think he so he never thought you was gonna do that. <laughs> no, because. Zoe don't put on that, that energy, and that's what makes a person 
mm-hmm. deadly when you're not expecting that mm-hmm. and you don't know what's in the person's heart. That's right. But that's always been my whole life. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers have underestimated me from jump. Me too. Oh, he light skin. Right, right, oh, right, he right. green eyes. Oh, he articulate. Mm-hmm. That don't mean I won't maul your ass. See, there you go. That there, does not right. mean that. There we go again about being a man. It's like he's he's still a man, but they but they used all those little thing, nitpick things to think say he wasn't to them in their eyes, or that he they could push or punk him. Yeah, we don't we don't want to project that being a man is mauling somebody. That's not. That, no, I'm no, just not saying. That I'm At just the end saying, of the day, like, yeah. like y'all was saying that earlier, and I agree with a lot of what y'all was saying about controlling your emotions and. Mm-hmm. And I agree with a lot of that. Uh, Confucius and all these guys talking about motherfucker, you can't conquer. You can conquer a thousand men and, and be powerful, but you can only become great when you conquer yourself. Uh-huh. And I get all that, all that. But everybody you meet is a work in progress. progress. That's right. Nobody is. I, don't, I ain't met a motherfucker to this day, including motherfuckers in here, that if you fucking push them. To their point, they're not going to respond in kind. Or react in kind. That's or react in kind. Yeah. Well, most so people I have, know what that is. Most mm-hmm. people have that type of what you head. did right there, Dre. <laughs> he said respond, you said react. React, yeah. yeah I, saw you. I got go, him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm yeah. saying like most people don't, most people know when they're around motherfuckers that they can't pull that with. Some people don't have that instinct, obviously. I, I really think Aries had that instinct where he know he could pull that with, but Zoe, Obviously you are, he didn't. No, I, no, I was saying, <laughs> Zoe, you come in disguise a little bit. You come in disguise because I know that he was doing that because he didn't think Corey, he you would shot, do anything. Was you shocked, Corey? We all were really about yeah, what? when it, when when yeah. when when Zoe put hands on him. Was you shocked or was you like, dang, I know Zoe was gonna go. No, 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 no. I know Zoe. Zoe yeah. is the type of person, in my opinion, this is my opinion. <laughs> Here, we <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. If he feel like you playing him like a bitch, <laughs> he going to show you I'm not a bitch. Right. Now, I think Zoe had a whole bunch of patience that show. Oh, yeah. right. we, all we all did. I was going to holler at him after the show. Right. Right, right, that's right. how I am. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. like, man, look, my nigga, you came up here. You was way out we of pocket. Make a fool but out before, of before I did that, he fucked up and pushed him over the edge. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? But we ain't no, we don't have like, it be so many people want to come on the show. Yeah. I be worried about fights. Of course. I be worried about shit that can go wrong. And I'm glad that I'm saying this lap. If I ain't invited you on the show, it ain't because I don't like you. It's just because I don't have insurance up here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I heard that. Nigga, yeah. This whole ass nigga went and got lawyers and yeah. was trying to sue yeah. me. Dang. I'm talking about like some shit like, I, like, like, like it was a white boy. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And the only reason he didn't follow through on the suit. Because when the lawyers found out it wasn't no insurance yeah. to go after, they weren't even really with it no more. What's that? What you gonna sue this? That ain't no money for us. Right, ain't, no, right. ain't no real money in that. Right. So the only reason the lawsuit didn't go through, even though I had to throw money at that motherfucker, yeah. was because the lawyers weren't willing to go after the individuals. Right, right. Because it wasn't no money in it for them. Right, right. And there so, was a lot against it too. I mean, come on, the truth was there. So Aries just stopped showing up. With the lawyers, with court and everything. Mm. I got this. I know all this. I'm mm-hmm, just saying. Mm-hmm. But I laugh at the shit because it ain't nothing that really happened as far as I'm concerned. I know when it's danger in the air. Because right, right. Aries, I got a text saying he think about bringing his goons and shit like that. That would justify anything. Right, right, right. But right. I know he don't He don't want it. Aries right. is a little, he's the son of an entertainer. And that motherfucker... He 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 be on planes there. We got him been at the airport. Aries, I done been at the airport. Motherfucker said, "Hey, Corey, Aries in there." The nigga got on a big leather jacket and some flip flops. I'm just saying, I don't run up in the airport because I don't want it. I'm right. glad, I'm happy with my life. Right, right. I don't right. want no shit. I ain't got no problem with Aries. Right, right. Because I know he ain't really that motherfucker. Nobody he act like he is. I could have did this. I could have did that. It's, it's, yeah. I had a bunch of uncles, man. Well, the reason yeah. why he continues to bring it up is because he's embarrassed. Yeah. He's That's embarrassed, he exactly. Right. And I want to say this he to Aries. To Anybody could get their ass that. whooped one day. True. Anybody could take an ass whooping. I think I could take an ass whooping if it was just you lost that day to that nigga. No, but he should have owned up to it and been but a that's man. That's a different said, generation. I and I think I think we, I mean, I think all of us are from the generation where I had uncles who would give us boxing gloves. Yeah. If, you know, the cousins and I were 
Well, you you didn't apply any... no boxing that day. You was doing some different shit. You were Ty Bo in that nigga. <laughs> there we go. Anyway. Then you was doing so. He, <laughs> do you do you want to see it? No, I don't. You want to see? Huh? I don't want to see nothing. Some shit, right. eh? But he caught him with a couple of them. Right. That nigga said, that nigga Aries, that last one you hit him with, he said, oh. <laughs> he went up under the desk after that one. I that one that. elbow caught him. He couldn't uh, take it no more. Oh, wanted to put man. that blood right there. Did you clean the blood out? Oh no, there it is. What the fuck is wrong with Corey? <laughs> Zoe be embarrassed when I talk about it though. That's why I fuck with him. I fuck with Zoe because oh, you man. you clear. It ain't nobody coming after you. That bitch ass nigga couldn't get. He gave them people that money up front. You know when you get a lawyer's the money up front. Right, right, right. It ran out. He yeah. didn't want to give him no more money. <laughs> Cause they was like, ain't no insurance on this, so you got to give us this. This how I go. Anybody who had to hire lawyers, no, it costs money to keep them people involved in your life. He ain't want to keep giving them that money. But it's old, that. man. Yeah, that's thanks. that's damn near thanks. three years ago, man. But it's still riveting. <laughs> Because <laughs> because old because, oh boy brought it back up recently. That's, that's why right. he brought yeah, it up. Brought it back I, up. I, I don't know why. I just let that shit ride. He's embarrassed. That's what I'm saying. But he don't want to own up to it and say, "Yeah." We're I'm talking like, about it. It's not going to remedy it unless you talk to me. But he's not going to talk to you because you got them elbows, nigga. <laughs> Let me see some. Damn! But no, I just no. felt these for the first oh. time. Oh, nigga, I didn't know that motherfucker was like that. God. <laughs> So what you be doing? The elbow machine at the gym? Um, <laughs> I can't with him. This motherfucker's but. sharp and hard. This uh, nigga got rhinoceros tips on the end. His, uh, why? So he, oh, God. No, but I'm open to talk to the brother. I'm <laughs> open to... That's what I was going to say. If he, if he, if he wanted to, shirt. I would squash it. Yeah. You should squash it. That's what men do. He'll, he'll talk to you. You got to send him some roses or something. Make it seem like you coming on the other level. No, nah, but yeah. I would talk to the nigga. <laughs> I would oh, I would God. squash it with him. <laughs> well, I ain't squashing it with you, nigga. I ain't saying I'm after you. I'm saying, but when I see you, we got to talk about all this shit that you be saying. That's all I'm saying. I just want to talk to you. Because I knew you before this shit. Remember, you used to hold my dick and all that shit. Corey, you, you this, you, you. And then you get up here, you get in the fight. Then next thing I know, I got these lawyers. I'm having to pay fight these motherfuckers. Oh, nigga, I spent some bread on that shit. <laughs> I spent some bread on this shit. Right. It, it, it wasn't nothing. A fight. A fucking That's fight. It. Nigga, motherfuckers get into fights all the motherfucking yeah, time. Yeah, you just own it. Take it. Yeah, right. not all that I'm other just saying, my nigga. Anyway, so you right. own motherfucking that show. You ain't telling what it really but, is. But for, for the youngsters who watching, don't 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 get it twisted. Don't have uh, it. Shit, me losing control, that's a demotion for me. A spiritual demotion. Is it? I don't see that shit as, as good or fucking... You know, some fly shit or some validating shit. It's not. He touched you, know? you though. That was an that was an opportunity that I chose, as my brother Dre just said, as I I chose to react instead of respond. So I mean, I could take full responsibility for that. He, uh, uh, Zoe is so gracious because you know I already beat the guy up. Right. He's, you can be gracious after the fact, huh? <laughs> right. So you it'd be he gracious though, but I, 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 I appreciate just feel like that. so no, that's real stuff what you just said, so on real. What you that's need real. to understand is everybody saw the shit who really watched the show. Everybody saw it. They know what happened. Of course, that's what it's it not says. even nothing you have to explain, yeah. goddammit. Mm-hmm. If somebody keep doing you like this and keep fucking with you and then talking shit to you, I'm saying the best of us could lose it. The best of us. I'm talking that's, about Especially if they're heavy handed. Shit, right. I'm one of them. <laughs> Hell yeah! You know your heavy headed friend, and right? Like man, stop punching me at the. You talking to me and hitting me at the same time. It's some about that man stuff we was talking about. You put this in the definition. If it ain't all kosher and you just fucking with a motherfucker, touching them, especially after the motherfucker that told you cool out, dog. <laughs> you, you, you do it too much. How was he touching you? How was he touching him, man? Man, Every show touch me, so show me how he was doing. Because I saw it. He kept encroaching. <laughs> closer and closer? Yeah. But no, oh, he went, yeah. and by him being drunk, he was like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, Lord. Lord. Yeah. yeah. It was like the type of shit you would be like, dude, God, cool out. Chill. Dog. Right. You know what I'm and saying? He did that. that was but then he got two hours. crazy. And right as he threw the threat, that's when Zoe came with these motherfuckers. What was the threat? Yeah. The, the threat he said was me, which means you light skin, so I'll beat your ass even quicker. That's that what he said? said? That's what he said. He said, I'll beat you. After that, Zoe couldn't take no more. After that, well, he didn't take no more. Zoe took off his glasses. Zoe was like, let me tell you something now. 
Wait, <laughs> 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 Wait, 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 it's a game for real. Wait, it's a game for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you said I'm very. Look, I got a joke left. Nigga, I'm hiding a motherfucker. Oh. Look. So said, I'm very in control. What did you say? <laughs> so so said, I've had about enough. This nigga's dumb as hell. But it was funny because. Oh is this going to be the last time we talk about it? Yes. No, hell no. I hope so. That was really Shit. one of the greatest moments of my life. Oh, man. Of your life. I'm just saying. No. Where you where you from? You laugh at the shit because you know it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I'm the one. I'm gonna keep talking right. about it. I, I threw about twenty thousand dollars at that shit. Damn. You don't uh, even know. I ain't tell you that. Oh shit! I threw money at that shit. Dog, when you go to court and you get a lawyer, it costs money. They rob you. I hate lawyers. It's just they don't let niggas talk. <laughs> when you go to court, they won't let you say shit. And if you do say something, they always looking at you like, uh, uh, the judge, everybody, man. What this nigga talking about? <laughs> the only you might be able to talk in court, Zoe, if you put on your real Zoe voice. If you be like, first of all, I like to say, if you talk like that, they might let you say something. But Willie D, you can't say shit in court. You go in court, Willie D, you'll be like, look here. Uh, they gonna be like hell no! Shut that nigga up! They don't let niggas talk in court. That's why niggas pay their lawyers that money. Oh my god! We can't say shit. I had um, child support. I, I ain't going. I ain't showing. I ain't gotta show up. Here, just say something. I ain't saying nothing to them motherfuckers. Yeah. I know what they gonna do. How was so. he gonna break them down when he talk on? Uh, look here, Your Honor. Uh, <laughs> back when I was a ghetto boy. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. No, look, let me tell you something about this man Willie D, man. When I first met Willie D, yeah. first of all, I met him a long time ago because I used to do shows in Houston at this thing called um, Just Joking. Was that the name of it? Yeah. And I remember the first time Willie D said something to me. I was like, damn, I'm talking to Willie D. I yeah. know you know what I'm saying? But he always showed me support. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So. You know what I'm saying? I say this about Willie D, man, because I watch people when they come around me. Yeah. Thorough. Ain't never seen no bullshit come about this man. Yeah, you yeah, see yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why that's why it's like almost like even though I ain't grow up around him, I trust him. I trust him like I trust the best of motherfuckers. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? So I'm saying like I'm, I'm joking with Willie D. I feel like I could joke with him like that because we can put in a little work like that. Yeah. Laughing and joking together on the phone. I had to listen to your story sometimes. It'd be interesting. <laughs> this nigga, when he get to tell his stories, yeah. he remind me of Charlie Murphy. Yeah. Charlie Murphy, when he just talk off the top, right. he'd be like, wow, this nigga is yeah. fascinating. Uh, well, he got some stories for your yeah. ass, mm-hmm. boy. Mm-hmm. But now nah, this, uh, I'm glad it, I'm glad y'all showed up, man. Um, it's a good show, man. Yeah, this is a good coming. show, man. Cheers. We we got we got some stuff off our chest. Um, Get that get that date again to the to the thing. Uh, conversation with the street part two, Seattle, Washington, June twenty sixth at Seattle City Hall, five to nine, free, all free. I will be there. there who are, who else on the show? Say it one more Corey time. will be there. Big U up out of L.A. Mm-hmm. My son out of New York. Jamila T. Davis out of New York. Nice. Mm. That's what's up. Nice. Get them tickets to come to the town. That's a good lineup, man. Yeah. Yes. That's a good lineup. Mm-hmm. All those are strong people. I, I follow all of those people. And, yes. and even, even that other lineup you had. Yeah. Uh, Joe Brown, Rizzo yeah. Islam, and Umar Johnson. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's strong. That's strong, man. Yeah, we and you know, just to add something, we, we was talking about like, you know, leadership and getting on code as far mm-hmm. as like uh, the unity thing. I think it's important for us to remember that we don't always have to agree with every single stance right. that each other have. Because what happens is that the minute somebody says one thing that's different from what your platform yeah. is, you shut down and yeah. then your whole audience shut down. Mm. The people that follow you shut True. down. True. We can't afford to have these uh, divisions, all these fractions. We're already fractured enough. Mm-hmm. We need all hands on deck yeah. right now. Like that. That's yeah. Let me piggyback on that. I think one of the one of the most important things that I learned in being able to win police accountability is that you don't have to agree with somebody one hundred percent of the time in order to build with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was kind of the theme of the last conversation with the streets. 
which is how we brought all brothers from all these different ideologies in, right. that everybody understood the most important thing was our unity and our youth. And our objective. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You that's know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's, that's yeah. the most important thing to know that, you know, we have the same objective. Like me, you know, like, I'm just going to talk specifically about the situation that we're going through in America as black people. What's the most important thing to me when I deal with black people is that they love black people. Mm -hmm. We gonna all make mistakes. Ain't none of us perfect. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we're gonna make mistakes. When that person make that mistake, we can't abandon them. If we know that person really love black people and he is a servant or she's a servant. We, we, we need that person. That person is necessary so we can't abandon them when they make a mistake. Right. We got to, okay, you made a mistake. Because what the enemy going to do is immediately, aha, uh -huh, see there? Sure. See there? Sure. Ah, he's this, mm -hmm. she's that. Mm -hmm. This, that, and the third, right? right. Sure. So we got to be like, okay, look, we got to do damage control. Same way they do it. That's right. All right, listen, uh, you know, uh, did you hear what uh, Trump said? Yeah, he fucking stuck his foot in his mouth. Look, I, I know this guy's damn problem, but <laughs> we gotta clean uh, it up. We gotta we're, we're, it. we're not gonna go. We're not gonna go out there. We're not gonna say anything publicly about it. We're gonna have a uniform uh, response to this. Yeah, sure. you know, we'll not, deal not, with them with the back channels. Yeah, we're gonna have a uniform response, and we're yeah. gonna we're gonna all make sure that we're on code. Yeah. Right. We got to remember, we got to get on code, yeah, man. We got to be on code. But at the same time, when I identify an enemy that's black, I'm going in on him. I don't care that he's black. Mm -hmm. I don't care if she's black. If I identify them as an enemy, a real enemy, somebody that don't love us, that's always trying to throw us under the bus, mm -hmm. and they're easy to recognize. The easy yeah. way to, mm -hmm. to recognize a coon is uh, a coon is going to their criticism of their community is going to outweigh their contribution. Mm. That's like the Look, easiest way. We can end it with that's, that. Uh, that's the uh, easiest uh, way to uh, recognize uh, a king. Yeah. That's when, powerful. When that, when that, when their, um, when their criticism of their community outweigh when when a, when when a coon's criticism of his community outweigh his contribution to his community. You know that that's how you that's, that's how you recognize right that's it right that's there. Dope. That's it. That's it. This one of them fifty one fifties is gonna be all time. Remember, yeah, I appreciate everybody who was here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, we gonna sign off on that, like my man said. I'm Corey Holcomb, y'all. I see y'all. You know how it go. Fifty one fifty. Next time. Yeah.